Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Is Sandra on board yet? Mayor Burkett? Here. Vice Mayor Paul? Here. Commissioner Salazar? Here. Commissioner Castle? Present. Commissioner Velasquez? I think her microphone, I think she's here, but her microphone is. Uh, okay, Mayor, you have a quorum. Great, let's see if we can get uh, Commissioner Velasquez's microphone working. And Sandra, you might have some feedback going on. I think you do, Sandra. So let's see if we can get that ironed out and then we'll go. Mayor, can you repeat that? Uh, yeah, your, your uh, microphone, uh, Sandra, is a little bit staticky. Yeah, I'm trying to look in from another computer if you give me a few okay. seconds. Maybe you want to uh, sign in and sign out. And we'll wait. Nelly, when you get your uh, microphone working, just please say hello and let me know you're there. Is that better? Ah, uh, yes, much better. Okay, would you like me to call the roll again? Uh, no, I think we got the roll. Okay. Okay, good. Um, good evening, commissioners. Good evening, uh, everybody in attendance. Tonight is a, uh, is a special meeting that I called because we've got an issue with respect to timing. There are questions that some commissioners and myself want to put before the uh, voters of Surfside and we want to uh, give them the opportunity to opine on them. And in order to do that, we've got to have the language of the ballot question in place. Uh, I guess it's gonna be this month. So that's the reason we needed to call this special meeting. And what I'd like to do is go around the room and I'm gonna, I want input from everybody um, on how they feel about a question that they may want to ask on the ballot or if they, object to questions being asked on the ballot. Um, I first like to start off with a, a short presentation that I have, and then uh, we'll go around and, and poll the commissioners. So Jose, would you please uh, put that, uh, that uh, first slide up, please? Sure, Mayor, give me one second. I was helping Nelly, give me one second, please. Thank I'm you. Helping Commissioner Nelly. Thank you. Eliana? Um, I just have a question. How long is the presentation? Uh, probably five minutes. Mm, okay. All right. Okay. Uh, here's the first ballot question that I would propose that the uh, town commission adopt to be voted on uh, in November. And that is, uh, I'll read it. Shall the charter be amended to affirm that elected officials never be paid or receive any benefit that exceeds $1 per year for any reason, and that any travel or expense reimbursement requested by any elected official be approved in advance or immediately following said travel and or expense by the full town commission. Now I'll tell you why that's on there because we don't have any travel or reimbursement policy at this time. And I know um, that the former commission had uh, put together a travel policy which uh, um, had updated uh, an earlier ordinance that uh, a commission before me had put in place, which I thought was pretty, was was pretty conservative and good. Uh, the travel policy that the uh, last commission put in place, I thought was uh, was not good at all. And I believe that uh, the reason we're doing these these questions for the electorate is to put in the charter um, some very basic fundamental guidelines that any elected group of of uh, of officials cannot change without a vote by the uh, 
by the electric. No. The other the other issue was that in the past there had been uh, requests for uh, 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 by commissioners to uh, buy, for instance, health insurance. Commissioners thought they were entitled to be uh, covered by health insurance, um, and I think that uh, you know we're here to serve. We're volunteers, and we're here to uh, to do a good job for the city, and get in and get out. So that's my first recommendation. Go to the second one, please, Jose. Question number two. Shall the charter be amended so that all elected officials be term limited to three consecutive terms in office or any part thereof, and following the aforementioned three consecutive terms in office, not be eligible to run for any elected office in Surfside for at least one two year period? We want to I want to find out if uh, residents believe that term limits should apply in Surfside. Personally, I think they should. Go to the next one, please. Shall the charter be amended to provide for a prohibition on the sale or lease for longer than a period of two years of any town real property without a supermajority of at least four members of the town commission voting to approve the measure which shall subsequently be followed and approved by a public referendum in which at least 75% of voters approve. Now, the reason I've said 75% is because I think it would be very unhealthy if 51% of the electorate thought one way and 49% thought the other way. I think with respect to, and as we all saw with the P3, um, it, was, it was a major fiasco. So this would be put in place to eliminate some of those problems. The next question, please, Jose. Shall the charter be amended to provide for a prohibition against and a requirement that there be a public referendum for the town taking out any loan or borrowing of any type, which would put the town into debt for more than 10% of its annual property tax revenue and which could not be fully amortized within a total of five years without a super majority of at least four members of the town commission voting to approve the measure, which shall, which shall subsequently be followed and approved by a public referendum in it which at least 75% of voters approve. That's just, that's about putting the town into debt. We've already been down that road where uh, elected officials put our town into deep debt and didn't bother to ask the residents if they wanted to go into debt or not. That would stop this. And the last question I have, I wanna predicate um, with some, uh, some interesting and pretty shocking information. Um, this, 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 this relates to the question that you see in front of me. Can everybody see the text or is it too small? It's too small. Okay, can you make that a little bigger please, Jose? No, no, go back. Go back, yeah, make that page bigger if you can. Thank you. Okay, Th what you're looking at there is the, uh, is the change. If you recall, we talked about the ballot question that was a bait and switch and was misleading to the residents. It basically said uh, it, was, it was purported to add restrictions but it did anything but add restrictions. So this was the text right there, the density, intensity, and height of the development structures within the town, et cetera. But take a look at the last sentence, commissioners and vice mayor. The last sentence says, this amendment to the town Surfside charter shall not be repealed, revised, amended, or superseded unless repeal, revision, amendment or superseding provisions are placed on the ballot. And here's the key, at a regularly scheduled election of the town of Surfside. Now, elections in March are the regularly scheduled elections. Special elections are those elections which don't happen in March. The election that approved this change in our charter was not held during a regularly scheduled election. It was held during a special election and therefore is invalid. 
Okay, now it's invalid. If you'll read what we've got here is an opinion. Scroll up to the top of this page, Jose, please. This is interesting because the, the last commission knew they had a problem. So what happened was the town attorney, and I some some had said this was related to the P3 because they knew that in order to get the P3 passed, they had to further change the charter. And someone recognized that a change in the charter could only be put in front of the electorate at a regular meet, uh, election and not a special election. So what they did was, as you could see, pursuant to your request, I've researched the issue concerning the interpretation of the phrase, quote, regularly scheduled election of the town of Surfside. Okay, now let's go down to the next couple pages. Go down one page, please. Um, is that the next page, Jose? Okay, so here we go. Factual background. In 2003, the Surfside Town Commission adopted its resolution placing a ballot measure on the town's March 16, 2004 election. That was the original restriction language put in the charter. And what it did was the purpose of that was to impose restrictions on the allowable density, intensity, and height of structures beyond the permitted as of said election date and requiring any future change to this charter language be presented to the town's electorate at, an, at a regularly scheduled election of the town of Surfside. Since 2004, charter section four, which is where that language is, has only been amended once. And that one time was the fraudulent language that the former commission put forward to trick the electorate. Go down to the next page. Okay, the next page where the highlighting is, please. Okay, so here, here's, a, here's one conclusion. Moreover, reading the charter section four together with the following related to the town charter provisions governing elections, evidence is that the term regularly scheduled election is a term of art that has developed a particular meaning designed to draw a distinction between the town's regular also known as general elections and the town's quote, special elections. Keep going down. Okay, under this rule, yeah, make that a little bigger, please. Under this rule, the subject portion of the charter section four that specifically addresses caps on allowable land uses prevails over the remaining section of the town charter, such as sections 97 and 91, which generally provide for a method of amending the charter, meaning the, in order to amend this special section of the charter, there had to be, you had to follow special steps. To arrive at any other conclusion would render the specific mandatory language of the charter in section four without meaning. Therefore, as a matter of law, Charter section four prevails over charter sections 97 and go to the next page. 97 one as the last expression of legislative intent on the subject of permissible elections or ballot questions proposing amendments to the last paragraph of charter section four, which interpretation results in the following. Number one. Surfside elections to amend the last paragraph of Charter Four, Charter Section Number Four, which is the key paragraph we're talking about, where the original language to protect the zoning code of the town of Surfside was written, may only be held during the town's general election, which happens in March. Anything else can happen any other time, but not the change to that part of the charter. Conclusion. Based upon the above analysis, it is my opinion that the language in the final paragraph of the town charter for section four, requiring elections to amend such language occur at a regularly scheduled election of the town of Surfside. Basically, if you want to amend the zoning code or the charter language regarding the caps on the zoning code, it needs to happen at a regular meeting, at a regular election, which it absolutely did not. Okay, go to the next page. 
Now, this is the ordinance that the former commission or the Deech Commission um, put forward in 2012, I believe it was, in order to get the question on the ballot. You'll, you'll see there that it talks about uh, uh, charter provisions being approved by a majority of the voters on November 6, 2012, according to the official results. That's a prospective statement. So let's go down to the next page. This, this is just the, this, the text of the amendment. What they did was they rewrote uh, or they added a citizen's bill of rights, which I don't think, which we can look at, but I don't think we're looking at tonight. So let's scroll down to the next page where there's some highlighting, Jose. Okay, here's the end of the, uh, here's the end of that resolution. And it's basically noticing the, uh, the election, which has been called an order to be held within the town on Tuesday, the sixth day of November, 2012. Not a regular election, but a special election. Okay, last page. Which brings me to uh, the, uh, the charter question I'm proposing. However, it's really a moot point because what's going on now is we've just found that the, the, charter, the, the charter change that was put forward and put it on by the electorate during the course of the last commission is invalid. But I think it might be prudent for us to basically put this question in front in order to avoid lawsuits because that's certainly gonna be challengeable by anybody that wants to challenge it. And it basically leaves us at a point where developers can't really develop according to any code that happens that's more restrictive than what was in place in 2004, which is what we're shooting for anyway. But in order to make it absolutely clear, I think we need to ask this last question, which is, shall the town charter and section four general powers of the town, powers not deemed exclusive of article one incorporation form of government, powers to be, uh, powers to be restored to reflect its original language adopted by a vote of over 92% of the voters in Surfside on March 16, 2004. So that would officially take us back to the point where we were in 2004. However, for all intents and purposes, we're back there anyway. Okay, comments, commissioners. Charles. Um, so Mr. Mayor, to be clear, that document that you were first referring to which um, assessed the legality of, uh, of the ballot initiative that was proposed. Was that from you or is that jointly from the town attorney? That, that document, that, what happened in 2014, we believe that during discussions about, you know, the upcoming P3, but maybe not, maybe they realized that they'd made a mistake and someone spotted it. So when you, I, I'm sorry, when you say we, who's we? Me? Okay. With the help, uh, I mean, I've been talking to a few people about this. Okay. But that, that, that is, that if document, that is, right, that document yeah, I mean, right there, that and I'm going to ask That would obviously have, a, have a ramifications. I'm going to ask the town attorney to circulate that. It's an opinion from Gene Olin that was solicited by the last commission on what the impact of that last sentence meant. And the bottom line is, it means that if you're going to change that provision of the charter, you absolutely have to have that question asked on a regular election, not a special election. And that question was asked during a special election, so it's invalid. So my understanding is that we as a commission can, and, um, can make changes that are um, more restrictive of uh, protecting the town, protecting Correct our livability, our scale, um, the essence of Surfside. So might it be better for us to proceed to do that and kind of lock it in? Um, I do think that it's important to go back to the town charter and the vote to the people, um, perhaps with a straw poll for our direction um, or something that kind of like locks in changes. Um, Charles, in order to change the charter, it's got to be done by the voters. So that's why you got to put a, a question out there. We can't, we can't change the charter. Correct. I know we can't change the charter. 
Um, but we are allowed to change zoning to make it more restrictive. We could. However, the reason the charter cap was in there was to protect against future um, commissions that might want to do the opposite of what you're just saying and make it a much less restrictive. So that basically is a governor, if you will, and it, it's a never to exceed sort of uh, provision. And that's yes. that's what we need. That's what we need to make sure is solidly in place. Yeah. Hey, um, I thought you know that was you had a lot in there with all those different ideas. I think what I what I'd love for our, for our um, commission to focus on is instead of focusing on the things we don't agree on, if we could move forward on the things that we do agree on, and then go from there to some of the more contentious issues, maybe where we don't see eye to eye. Um, some you know with the zoning, I think we all agree that we want to help get the zoning back under control. But at the last meeting it sounded like we all agreed that we can work with what we have and make it more restrictive. I so, think we are. I think okay, we are so in agreement. I think we are in agreement. And I think you're doing a good job. Okay. I think your suggestion was excellent, but what we're talking about here is not that. We're just talking about the caps. Right, if there, if there was something that made, if something, what, that whole presentation about the charter and it was voted and it wasn't a special, that's, that is like a rabbit hole that I don't think we can go down tonight because if it was really invalid, I'm quite certain someone would have challenged that at some point. Well, the only, people, the only people that would challenge it would be people against a hyper permissive code. And right, but there, people, were, there are quite a few residents that have been very active quietly or not so quietly for the past decade with very strong opinions on zoning. So if there was a technicality that could have eviscerated the changes, I'm pretty sure they would have explored that option. Some of those people are already lawyers. I disagree because okay. you know we just that that was just you know that just became apparent. Okay, so I, I want to set that aside. Would I would would I agree with you? Um, a couple of thoughts on some of your items. The one dollar okay. a year is already in the charter. Okay, and let's, Frank, let's let's bring that up. Let's okay, but let me up. can I just run through all of my feedback and then we can go to each one. No, you can. Okay. I, I, I just want I want it up while you're talking. Let's go back to number okay. one, Jose. Sure. So. Can I talk or no? Yeah. Please. Okay, so the, the dollar a year is quite frankly, it's already in the charter. And unfortunately, I think you're, you may be alone on this one because the rest of us, um, this is a lot, a lot, a lot of work. I think it's kind of ridiculous that we get nothing. I think that we don't wanna obviously put anything on the ballot that would enrich ourselves. But I do think going forward, this town is gonna get what they pay for. And they may wanna consider some kind of a, whether it's health insurance or a salary or something, this is, you know, fortunately for the town, bad for me, but fortunately for the town, my industry is completely dried up because of the COVID. Jose, I'd, number one, please. Or I'd have to be, number one. you know, being able to balance a real career with this enormous responsibility and workload is very, very challenging, which is why most communities actually have some sort of a salary with this. So I don't think that you're going to, I think we should probably not even waste time on this one because I'm not sure you're going to have any I know I've heard Nellie say before that her time's worth money. I know I believe my time's worth money. I'm sure Tina's time is worth money. Commissioner Kessel's time is worth money. And quite frankly, we're not, all of us are not in a financial position to be doing this for a dollar a year forever. Fair enough. Um, I mean, so, I, and if, if I could just add succinctly, um, I think one of the, um, well, one of the concerns that I have is at this time with this upcoming election, um, is we don't want to become kind of the, the California or the San Francisco, even though I love both those places, of ballot initiatives with a lot of details. Even Florida State um, has a lot of ballot initiatives that can be on the ballot, and um, and it can be kind of overwhelming. Um, I think right now people want us to stick kind of to the basics, um, and some of these are tend to be overly complicated and nuanced. Um, so just real quickly, I'm going to get out what I tried to circulate today, but I, we thought it might violate some sure. laws. Can I, can I finish what I was saying, Commissioner okay. Kessel, before you? Um, no, let me just finish and then I promise I won't, they just say anything for a while. Okay. But I, I don't support ballot initiatives that make binding commitments to anything non-essential at this time. Um, with so much unknown going forward due to the COVID crisis, um, I think it's too much to ask voters to consider big investments and capital infrastructure projects at this time and in a few months on election day. Um, I am considering supporting non-binding straw polls 
to gauge general support for or against, one, the undergrounding of town power systems, and two, strengthening our town charter to safeguard public town assets for the public, including public property and public access to natural resources, including our beaches, our parks, and our street ends. Okay. okay. Thank you. Go, go ahead, Eliana. Okay. So I, I would agree with everything Commissioner Kessel said. I would really love us, I, I mean, I think we should look at this as we may only be in office for two years. What can we do that's really gonna protect the town for future generations? And I think what brought all of us together and what got us all interested in town politics, with the exception of Tina, who was already involved, is the P3. And I really commend you, Mr. Mayor, for doing that. I really think that we should put something that's worth going to the polls with the ballot question about the P3s to put the restriction. And, and you know, I talked to the town attorney, most towns have something in there to protect the lease or sale of town land. And I do think it needs to be specific. And I think it needs to be, um, I don't think it needs okay, to- well, let's, let's, let's do this, Eliana. Okay, let's, hold let, on, let me I finish. Think, I, I think I'm gonna let you finish, but I think we're going, let's, let's stay on this question and let every commissioner opine and we'll go down the list is that okay? okay but I, no, but let me just finish what I was, let me just give me the, over, I'll give it, I'll, I'll shorten it up for the overview. All I right. would like to spend our time working on a P3 to prevent that from happening without the voters, understand? It's not to say that we can never have a P3 in the future, but it's going to be up to the voters. I don't think it can be 75% because the way America works is it's a 51 and 49, and that's just the American way. Okay. So I don't think we can make excessive restrictions on what what is a what passes and what doesn't but i'm 100 percent with you and i'd love that to be i'd love that to be my okay. legacy that we let's, at least changed it so that that can't happen ever again let's let's I agree i appreciate your 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 supporting that one because that's like number four but let's do let's see if again my my time right now i'd like to get everybody's opinion and if listen if ballot question if if a majority of the commissioners don't want to restrict the pay and the benefits for elected officials, then so be it. That's okay. all, that'll, that'll be okay. I just, I think everybody should go on record as to where they stand on everything. And I think that the voters, the residents want to know, and that's cool. I mean, if, if, if some believe that they should be paid, I respect that. I just disagree with it, but let's go, let's go down the list. We'll the go around. The second one I support is I absolutely think we should go to the voters before borrowing a lot of money. Like okay, you said. well, listen, that's, that's number important. four. Let's go with number one first, Nelly. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, regarding, I, I'd like to go in order because that's the best way to do things instead of jumping all over the place and giving your opinion on everything. Um, I think that uh, ballot number one, I do uh, would I do not think that we should be paid $1 a year because our time is worth a lot more. And although we came onto this to, to um, better our town, um, it's an enormous amount of work. I mean, if you see the book that was brought in today, I mean, it's a huge book and we have to read all this and then you have to be uh, trying to push all these um, different um, initiatives forward. For example, the undergrounding of the power lines, that took me an enormous amount of time to research, call different cities, uh, get information, look at our previous um, information that we had on file. It's, a, it's an enormous amount of, of, of work that I've had to do with no help from anyone in town hall, which I think people should have been reaching out to me, knowing that I'm trying to do this to get the information for me, as that's what our, our, our staff are there for. Um, unfortunately, I had no support of anyone, and that those kind of things should change. I had to go out and reach out to people to get anything done, um, and I do feel that that this commission should be paid. I'm not at, like like Eliana said. I don't expect to get rich on this, but you know, give me some kind of compensation that would um, make make it feel that um, our time is worth something. Okay. As you know, we're all educated people. We're not, um, you know come off the street, each one has their own um, expertise. And that's what I wanted to say. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Thank you. As someone who sat in this chair, or this office for four years at the $1 a year salary, um, after my first term, I started to question too the amount of money, the amount of work I had been doing. 
And in my research, uh, it started with trying to get health benefits. Um, we are all eligible for health benefits. However, we have to pay for them, which is uh, on somebody in my earnings, it's not feasible. So I am without health benefits. Um, I found out that resolution 968 from July 26, 1976, uh, was a referendum election to reduce monies paid to the mayor and council to $1 per fiscal year, which means prior to 1976, commissioners were paid more than $1 per year. Um, this is in Article 2, Section 3, codified as 7, and it was effective since 1978. So um, in our, our past election, you did have uh, nine candidates for commission, so... Um, it was understood to me that I'm only getting a dollar a year for this term as well. Uh, it's something I've accepted. Do I want to run again? I'm not sure. So I support uh, the ballot question uh, two for the term limits because why not? Uh, what I would like to state though, uh, for anyone interested to look up compensation of elected officials in Miami-Dade County, it's, it's a document from the ethics uh, and I think the League of Cities from 2018. And on that document, 29 municipalities Fish of uh, elected in 29 municipalities in Miami-Dade County, uh, elected officials receive a salary. Out of those 29 municipalities, 17 of them receive a pension. Um, there are six municipalities that include Surfside that receive a dollar salary or less. So that's where we are now. And um, do I want to put this question on the ballot? It's not necessary because you cannot give us money legally without uh, the voters deciding to do that. So if, and, I, and actually in that document, it does state that people were paid, um, not aware of it, I wasn't paid, and what didn't happen under my terms, and uh, we don't receive health insurance. And as far as travel reimbursement, uh, there was always a policy in place. And what the previous commission did that I sat on, we were told that the travel, policy needed to be updated and, and um, we didn't change anything. It was just to make it more uniform. And if you check with our attorney and finance director, they will tell you that that's what I was told when we passed the travel policy update. Okay, so, I appreciate, I appreciate uh, the comments. Uh, the, the, with respect to the travel policy, I'm very, very familiar with it because I researched it during the campaign and I found that it went from only elected officials to allowing elected officials and others that want to come along with them to travel with them. And uh, it, it was- uh, it, No, it, it no, was, I have to say- um, no, But I'm not, I'm not finished. Okay. So I, I would say that it didn't, it didn't add any, uh, any, any benefit for those people, but what it did was it, it, it didn't prescribe that this was official business, okay? So it was a lot more liberal, and if you want, no, I'll no, I have to, I have to disagree because, um, first of all, I don't know who you mean by others traveling with elected okay. officials because okay. spouses are not paid for. When when my partner travels with me, I pay for her expenses. So I'm not sure, I'm not clear about that. And and please, can we have the attorney opine on this? Well, we can, but let's hear from Eliana for a second. Go ahead, Eliana. Okay, okay. so I, I I just like to move on because we have a lot of. Things that we want to get to. It costs seven thousand well, dollars per ballot. Can I question. just speak on this one quickly? Yeah, but no. that's so right. So if, hold on, Charles. Um, I appreciate you want to move on. Is there anything else you want to say? So what I'm saying is, it, this isn't worth all. This isn't worth even discussing. If we can, just, we've all kind of said that we're not interested in this one. We can tweak the um, travel expense thing without involving a ballot question, without involving seven thousand dollars. We don't even spend that on travel in ten years here in this town. So this is not a good use of resources or time. If we can move on to the next ballot question, listen, that'd be great. I, I respectfully, listen, I appreciate your comment, Eliana, but it is exactly what we're here to do. It's not a waste of our resources. It's not a waste of our time. If, you, if you're not supportive of it, that's fine. That's fine. Go ahead, Charles. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I'm glad that you're mentioning this because it is, um, you know, it is something that that kind of triggers emotions, right? A lot of people complain about Congress and whether they should be paid or not, whether they should have benefits, whether they should have Obamacare or whatever. Um, and I do agree with, um, you know, I agree with the sentiment. It sounds good, you get a dollar a year, so that way you have virtuous work. But I think it, it actually impacts the opposite because you have to look for ways to survive. Um, and, you know, a dollar earned is a dollar's worth of work. Well, you know, $50,000 is worth 50,000 worth of work, et cetera. 
So I agree with uh, Commissioner Salzhauer, Velasquez, the Vice Mayor, um, because um, you know it is hard. I try to balance every every hour, every day that I don't spend in my business is a direct result on my bottom line. Um, this is a lot of uh, it is a lot of work, and I think that actually we we devalue the work that we do um, by putting the, the dollar, um, and it almost uh, creates a situation where it's a bit of a gimmick where. There's no question that people have to kind of look for a kickback or a schmoozing way to get like some kind of indirect payment. Um, yeah, not that you have to. And there's certainly people that you know have other resources, so really don't you know need to be paid for the time that they're that they're spending. Um, I'll also say you know healthcare benefits are a big challenge for me. I was always used to working with big organizations where you know the the employee chips in, the employer chips in. Um, but it's it's at a decent rate. So even if you have to pay the whole thing under COBRA, you know, it's kind of fair because there's a decent number of employees. I've had Obamacare the entire time that I've had my 11-year business in operation. And um, well, it only kicked in, I think, a few years into that. But um, in the beginning, it was that pooled, affordable, good care. Now I pay monthly like six or $700. And I can't get, for Blue, Clo Blue Cross Blue Shield, I can't get sick outside of Miami-Dade, Broward, and, um, and Palm Beach counties. So I'm up with my parents. I've got to go to uh, urgent care. Nope, 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 not, not available. Um, it's just very strange. So these are kind of the pressures, and I really appreciate the vice mayor for speaking out because this is part of our reality. You know, um, even being on Zoom, this is like almost like reality TV, right? We kind of let out our, our personal thoughts and our passions but I appreciate people who think that we should be paid a dollar a year because they're coming from a good place, including, I think, you, Mr. Mayor, um, that, uh, you know, that we shouldn't be in it for the money. Um, I know that, cert that working class municipalities tend to pay their, their, um, their commissioners and elected representatives because it's kind of not as glamorous and there's maybe not as, as many opportunities um, to meet with uh, the sexy people among us, um, but uh, but so thanks for mentioning this. I also agree. I think we should we should um, not have it on the ballot. It's a um, it's a bit of a distraction, and we should close loopholes related to if there are any related to um, reimbursements for family members. Okay, Nelly, I'm going to get you. I just want to respond to a couple comments. First of all, nobody put a gun to our head and said, "Hey, listen, you got to run for office for a dollar a year." Okay, we need to be doing this because we love the town and we wanna give back, it's public service. It has nothing to do with getting paid. Number two, it's not the voters problem. Um, and I, I, I'm not talking, I'm not, this is not in response to what you just said, Charles, it's just a general statement. It's not the voters problem, um, how we are situated personally, whether it's financially, whether it's housing, whether it's insurance, whether it's anything, it's not the voters problem. Okay, and the question that is in front of you, all it says, is that the elected officials, right now, Eliana, you're right. It says they won't receive more than a dollar a year as pay, but it leaves wide open the vice mayor's comment, which is she's right, about the town paying for healthcare benefits should, should a future commission want it. For instance, if a future, you're shaking your head no, but anyway, I'm saying in the future. In because, the future. No, because it's not true. We, because of the dollar, oh, we but can't- Hang on a second, no, hang on a second. I'm, health I'm, insurance I'm, is considered compensation. I'm, we cannot I'm get it because it's more than a dollar. My, Vice this mayor. is valid. You don't need to do anything. This Vice is mayor, I'm glad that 1976. I, appreciate, I appreciate that's your legal opinion. Okay. But the fact of the matter is Ask the attorney. I'm not a I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, I know. I know. That's why I said I appreciate your legal opinion. But it's not my opinion. This is the attorney's opinion. I looked okay. into this. Okay, well, okay. Well, listen, let's let's read the text. Let's read the exact text of what it says because it doesn't say that. It says pay. Okay, pay is not benefits. So there's a lot of loophole there for future commissions to take advantage. So all I'm saying is that my effort here was to try to close that loophole and to also say, hey, listen, if any future commissioner or commission is gonna be traveling around on Surfsiders dimes, they need to get it approved by that commission and be accountable, that's all. So it's not a big deal, but if it's not something you're comfortable with, you won't put it on. But I'm just saying, I think personally, I think it should go on there, Eliana. 
can we just move on? We, it's four to one, and I appreciate your passion for this, but we're very, we're all in very different. Okay, you already said to move on. I was I'm going to get the rest to of speak. the commissioners who are going to talk. Go ahead, Nellie. Thank you. I think this ballot, this ballot question should be changed not to not exceed one dollar, but to actually give compensation to uh, the commission. As I, sorry, Charlie, on this one, I don't agree with you. Uh -huh. I think that um, our our commission should be paid, even if it's not a salary, at least a, a medical benefit, something that shows the appreciation for the work we do, because it is in the best interest of this town and I'm not here to make any money at all. Um, and I didn't, of course, get into this expecting kids to get any money. I also didn't think that the amount of work that this was gonna bring was this enormous. And I think everyone shares that sentiment that it is an enormous amount of work, far more than we even do in our own businesses. So I think that that's something, this ballot question should read in a very different way. It should read that, the, that we should ask our, our, our residents whether they would care to, to give compensation to the, um, to the uh, commission. And honestly, I think that giving compensation also avoids the fact that people might take bribes and stuff like that and, 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 and do wrong things because now you're held to a different standard um, based on the fact that you're, that you're getting a compensation, whether it be a financial compensation or whether it be medical benefits because medical benefits is an important thing. And why am I less than everyone else? Why is my time worth nothing and everyone else's is? That's not right but that's my opinion. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you, Mayor. I'm gonna have the, the article sent to you all. Um, what I wanted to say is that, first of all, yeah, when I ran, I knew it was a dollar a year. I knew that for, you know, this is my third term now. So after the first term, I, I saw how it was an increase in work. So yeah, I thought that it would be great to get something just uh, for my personal investment, because I'm invested in, in this work. I take this work seriously. My personal, my my business, not my personal work, it's my business, suffers because I don't get back to those people. I get back to residents. Clients and customers have to wait to hear from me. But it's not about me. It's, and it's, and I just want to clarify a few things. First of all, it's in the charter already, the dollar a year compensation. So there's no need to put that in there. We, it, to change that, you would need to put that in there if we were to get salaries. That has to be by charter vote. Okay, I'm not asking for that. I'm just stating the facts. As far as, um, you know, please ask the attorney about, because first of all, we can't get health insurance because it's considered compensation and it's more than a dollar. So we, it, we're not, we, we, if we're, we are eligible for health insurance if we pay the full amount ourselves, the town does not cover any of it. Uh, as far as the travel, again, ask the attorney because um, spouses are not included. I don't know what, what you refer to by others because, um, you know, I, 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 there's not much travel. The travel is for official business. It's if you go to a conference. It's if you go to uh, a luncheon. Uh, I mean, a lot of times it's not. It's not really, and it's only covered for you. No, nobody extra. So I don't know where you're getting that from. Maybe that was on your previous commission. It hasn't been on my commission. It hasn't been for me anyway. So please, let's get that cleared up. Okay. Thank you, Eliana. Okay. So I just want to say. I think that it sounds like we're more in the in the all of the mindset that we do think that this should be compensated in some way, but I don't think we can do it for ourselves now in office. It, it would not be appropriate. We have another election in two years. We can spend the next two years researching and figuring out how much we think the next people should be compensated, and then we can run again. And that way we're not doing something to benefit ourselves. This will read like we got into office and we changed the rules to benefit ourselves, which we can't do. So I'd love to just move on to the other items, but I do think it sounds like we all think that this should be a position that is compensated in some way, whether that's just through health benefits or from a salary, and we can spend the next two years figuring that I, out. I think, I, on the next, I think on the next clear. regular election, okay. we can do that. I, 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 can, can I just state one more thing? Sure. Okay, so anyways, if we were to put this on the ballot, it would not be effective for us. It would be effective for the incoming commission. Just to I just don't think we should spend, we should, we, you. we're going to be, Lily, we're going to have a time crunch I, I, Eliana, for November said, ballot. Eliana, you said that five times, okay? okay. That's okay. fine. I know you don't want to spend time on it. We're going to move along to the next question. Okay. But before we do, um, Madam Attorney, do you, can you read us the exact language of the pay uh, um, in the charter? 
the portion of the charter that talks about pay, dollar a year. Um, yes, can you hear me? Hold on. Yes, I can hear you. Okay. It is section seven, salary of the charter, and it reads as follows. Commencing with the term of office, beginning at 8 p.m. on the day following the general election in 1978, the mayor and members of commission shall be paid the sum of $1 for fiscal year for attendance at monthly council meetings, irrespective of the number of regular or special meetings attended within such fiscal year. Thank you. Okay, so that just says they're gonna, you get paid a dollar to attend the meetings, but if some crafty commission in the future wants to say, well, we, we'll take the dollar for the meetings, but we also need to, our health insurance, we need travel pay and da da da. Oh. Okay, well, I appreciate that you don't agree, but I think everybody watching can have an opinion. Okay, let's but Tina, on. the vice mayor already researched this about whether let's, she could even get health insurance. Uh, Eliana, Eliana, excuse me. I mean, the mayor is talking and we need to have some respect for that. Right, okay, but you keep interrupting, but you're the one who's making this go on and on and on. He Let's is. Finish he the wanted argument. to talk about it again. Okay, you need to calm oh, down good. and stop. We need to be able to get through all of this, and that's it. Let's Thank put you. the next question. Oh my Thank God. You. Thank you, Tina. Uh, Tina, and then we're going to go to the Show next question. Show some respect for each other. Yes, I, I just, I just want to ask the attorney to clarify that another commission cannot walk in and get more than a dollar compensation. Can we can we get a legal opinion on Adam this? Madam Attorney, do you want to give a legal opinion on whether or not benefits or any other payments are allowed? Yeah, that was our interpretation at my firm. We made that interpretation with respect to health insurance, that health insurance is compensation and would be barred by this section of the charter. I cannot tell you what other attorneys would opine in the future, but that was our interpretation. Okay, so that's one interpretation but that doesn't guarantee that it wouldn't happen. Okay, go to the next question, please. Jose. Shall the charter be amended so that all elected officials be term limited to three consecutive terms in office or any part thereof and following the aforementioned three consecutive terms in office, not be eligible to run for any elected office in Surfside for at least one two year period. I propose this and I hope you guys will support it. Who wants to go first? Eliana. I think we already have an election every two years. The voters can vote people out that they don't like. This is, again, I don't think this is worth the, the, the residents $7,000 for the time or effort. It's $3,000. Okay. It's 7,000 per question is my understanding. $7,000 per ballot question. Okay. Well, let's okay. clear that up. Go ahead, Sandra. What's Second. the answer? Yes, Mayor, it's about $7,000 for the election and any extra question will incur an extra fee, not a lot, it's not, um, not $7,000. It's only if it goes to another page, which we don't know until we tell them how many pages there are. How, how many, many questions? questions? One question will be about $7,000. If we add any other question, the additional fee will be if the, the ballot question goes to another page and we won't know that until we tell them how many questions. Thank you, okay. So this is this is the issue. Nelly, you go ahead. Um, I do support term limits, as I feel also we should have term limits in Congress and everywhere else. Uh, so to me, I think this ba this ballot question is 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 a good question, and it's a question that should be on the on on uh, an opinion of our residents. Um, as we we don't want people to sit here and make this a lifetime thing, and then do things that. Um, that are that people don't agree with, and then we have to wait until the two years or whatever time goes by. And then look, the last time they tried to end, to change it from two years to four years. Uh, so honestly, I don't. I agree with term limits across the board. Okay. I mean, we have uh, term limits for presidents. We have term limits for um, mayors in some cities. We should have term limits for um, our elected officials here as well. Very good. Okay. Let Charles, the people I, I, vote. That's all. Charles? Um, you go, and then the vice mayor, and then Eliana. Okay. Um, I am not against term limits by any means. Um, I think that, that this is another kind of complicated, nuanced factor about the three consecutive terms. Should it be two? Should it be four? Um, and I do know about term limits. Everybody likes the idea until they want to vote again for the person, the guy or the gal that they like. <laughs> um, and my, my opinion on this is very simple. You're going to probably hear this from me more. Um, with COVID, you know, we're asking people to vote by mail. When they spend every every minute that they spend at the polling place, 
is another minute they're at risk. Um, so I just don't want to make it overly complicated. And, um, and uh, so I would say no to this on the. On the okay, list. Eliana. Um, I also think it's, it's not necessary because we have elections every two years and this isn't clear. Is this just like if you're a commissioner for three terms, then you can run for mayor. Or if you were a mayor, can you then run to commissioner? Again, I agree with Commissioner Kessel. It's too complicated. It's not necessary. We also have tried to pass in the past, it was on the ballot, whether we should have staggered terms. They've tried to do it before and it failed. This I think is, I would not support this because I think we should stay focused on P3, borrowing money, accountability, the big issues that we're all passionate about, that you care about, that I care about, that brought us to office and focus on that. This is not important right now. And we can spend the next two years putting it on our, our election in two years if you want. But okay. right now, just, just we're so gonna have you a crunch know, time to you, make the deadline. You are any commissioner that wants to edit the language and change it a little bit is fine. That's just my recommendation right there. You know, I, I think in answer to your comment, and I'll go to uh, Vice Mayor in a second, I think in answer to your question, basically, what do you do when all of a sudden you don't have people to run against the people in office, okay? Just because someone doesn't run, you end up with a, a guy in office for 10 years, okay? So that that's a problem, and that doesn't encourage new blood. So you can't force the, people to run. The, well, you can't force people to run, but you can put people in a position where they can't keep running and where you reach out and people feel like they can now don't have to run against an incumbent. This pays a dollar a year. No one's sticking around. Okay, okay. I already want out. Okay. Let's just get this no, over no, with. No, yeah, no. You okay. see that? That's nice, but I disagree. Vice Mayor. Okay, thank you. Uh, you know, as a voter in New York City, I voted for term limits. I believe in term limits. However, we are a small town. I mean, my first two elections, we only had one extra candidate. So that meant four people were, that meant three people were winning. You know, there was only, you know, so, I mean, this past election, we had nine candidates. Uh, with a dollar a year, we're lucky to get four candidates. I, I think uh, my first uh, year here back as a voter was like, there was no election because you had the exact amount of people running. So that's the point. I, that's you the know, point. It doesn't encourage turnover. You see, well, when nobody no, no, was, term limit, it, it had nothing to do with term limits. It had to do with people does. not wanting to run. It does, because people are afraid to run because they think they can't win. No, they don't want to run for a dollar. I, prom <laughs> no, I don't think that's it. But listen, I appreciate the opinion. Um, okay, I don't, let's move on then to the next one, please. Shall the charter be amended to provide for a prohibition on the sale or lease for longer than a period of two years of any town real property without a supermajority of at least four members of the town commission voting to approve the measure, which shall subsequently be followed and approved by a public referendum in which at least 75% of the voters approve. Eliana. I, I really, really, really love this. I think we have to tweak the language. Um, and I think we need to make sure, I, I know when I asked the attorney on this one, she was saying that it was gonna take a long time and maybe we should just you know, gauge people's interest. I think we should invest the time and, and prioritize this. And the goal is just, it's not preventing any of this from happening. It just means that the residents have to, have to, have to vote on it. So they can't have these secret things happening at the last minute. We don't know about it, like with the P3. What would um, you I don't, change? That, right. But the thing is, I'm not sure the two, the question is, I know that we have some land, for example, we lease some parking lot to the post office, right? And that is a deal that I think is longer than two years. So maybe the right amount of years is five years because no one's going to put, a, no one's going to build an office building or a parking garage or something. They're not going to get their money back in five years. So I think I, the I two years. Nobody's going to build a parking garage unless the voters of Surfside say they can build a parking correct, garage. Correct, correct. But we okay, do so want to be able. Voters of Surfside say they can do it, then it's okay. With respect right. to the post office, you, you just reminded us that we get elected every two years. Okay. We shouldn't go into long-term leases. It shouldn't be 99 years. It shouldn't be 50 years. And maybe shouldn't be five years. What I'm saying is Someone five years. To, sorry, I don't see five good. years as a long-term lease. All right, that's fine. That's your so opinion. Let's, maybe it's three else? years. I just think two years. I don't know what the post office requires. Well, that's okay. Just The post office doesn't require anything that we won't give them. Okay, we're the landlord. We no, it's great. Right. But we don't, wanna, we don't want to have to. Okay, here's the other thing. The trick is you don't want to have renewable leases. So you don't want to have a two-year lease renewable for 99 years. So 
So okay, this well, language. Let's not get too complicated. I do leases every day. That's that's ridiculous. Don't worry about that. What what do you recommend? And then I'm going to go to the next person. What I'm recommending is that we give we we vote on giving the town attorney direction to to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish. No, 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 no. The town attorney doesn't make up the terms of the agreement. You do. No, so the you, town attorney can see what other towns have no, I'm not, okay, wise well, in their charter. If that's, your, if that's your opinion, if you want to have her look at what other towns have, that's great. We'll go to the next person, but that's fine. Okay, vice mayor and then Nelly, then Charles. Thank you, Mayor. So um, first of all, the, the P3, it was not a 99 year lease. That was what was proposed. It was something that we were looking at. It was not voted on. It was gonna to go to the voters. I, I definitely agree with protecting our, our town owned property that anything should go to the voters. That would have gone to the voters had it gone further and I'm glad it didn't. But the fact is, uh, and I'd like to know if, with this question, if this question were in place, would the community center not have been torn down because that did go to voters and it still got torn down. So I, you know, unfortunately I wasn't here for that part of history. So I don't know all of that. I want to do something that would support, you know, what to prevent what happens to the community center. That's what I would like to support. And, and so I, I do support that uh, town owned property should not be uh, leased or sold unless it's uh, approved by the voters. Tina, what happened in the P3 is they were fighting not to have to put it in. That was the whole push. The group saved Surfside and Surfside shall not be sold was pushing. They did not want to put it on the ballot. We recommended that we fought them and then at the last minute, it was the commission's decision to all of a sudden now put it on the ballot in order to try to save the deal. No, I, I happen to be in the room I for that. To, I happen to be. I happen to be, I happen to be there too. Okay. okay. And, and I, I and appreciate that you're you. on that commission, but yeah. I can tell you as a matter of fact, that there was no desire to go out to a ballot until they got their hands caught in the cookie jar, okay? No, I can tell you as a matter of fact, it had to go to a ballot unless the zoning was changed. Negative. Because the way so the zoning was set up, it could not it could not be done without a ballot. That's, so, that's why, and that's well, why- Well, that's what they were trying earlier. to do, change I know the they were, I caught that. I that's, caught that and I voted why, against that. That's so, why you, you thought know. earlier in the meeting where I showed, that's why the, the, this commission, former commission, was trying to get the charter amended so they could do it, okay? Another well, we're not on that question yet. I have comments for that too. I, I wasn't okay, part but, of that, but I was part okay. with the. P I was there for the P three. All right. So I know what went on. Eliana. And it could not have been done without a vote of the residents. I, the zoning was changed. So I have I have actual texts from the attorney from the P three, two commissioners at the time saying, "You promised we weren't going to have to go to a referendum. You promised this. You promised that." So their intention, and now maybe they told. Tina, what she wanted to hear, and they told other people what they wanted to hear. But I have it in writing from the attorneys on the project that they never wanted to go to it, but it shouldn't be up to them to want to go. I agree that we need to put it into the charter that it must go to public referendum. Must, must, must. What, what I'm stating is that it, it had to, based on the zoning, it had to go to public referendum unless the zoning was changed. Correct. They were trying to change They were trying to do. They were trying to change the zoning. Two different subjects, Vice Mayor, two different subjects. Hold on, can I finish? So yeah. the, vice, the Vice Mayor is absolutely correct in what she's saying. We're, we're all right here. We're just different perspectives. They were trying to go around the requirement to have to go to the public by changing the wording of the zoning that would enable them to do that. So she's 100% correct. I think we want to make sure that our change to the charter makes there be no workarounds that this has to, that, that, because this would, this doesn't specify if you change the zoning that you have to go to a public referendum. This says if you're leasing or selling town land has to go to the referendum. So this, I like that because this is very clear. I'm not sure legally about the 75%, maybe 66% is enough of a supermajority. Um, and I don't know whether two years is the right number. Maybe we need four years so that we can, you know, have the post office in town, which I know a lot of residents want to keep. Okay, you already um, said that you already said that about the post office. Go ahead, okay. Vice Mayor, and then Tina and then Nelly. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I would I do agree with Eliana in that this needs more work. I, I want it to be done properly. Uh, as far as the post office, that would be a P3 because we're dealing with town-owned land and land owned by the post office. So that would be a P3, but that would be a beneficial P3 because it, it's something 
it, you know, it, it would be it would work out. Um, as far as uh, I think that we also need to take a look at the charrette because I looked at this charrette. Um, I just looked at it actually. Uh, it's from, it actually, it was from your term, Mayor, from 2006 and 2007, and there were a lot of things in that charrette that uh, we're dealing with today. Uh, part of it was a civic center. So, you know, do we want these things still? Because they were wanted back then. So I think, you know, a lot of what the previous commission was acting on was things that were presented in the charrette. A lot of what we're handling now has to do with that too. I know, I know that's a different topic than the ballot questions, but I'd like to see this ballot question developed properly. I don't think it should be rushed forward because it, we could end up uh, hurting ourselves if we do want to make a deal with okay. the post office, folks, then we won't be able to without the vote. Folks, uh, Nellie's next, but just remember when you say, I don't want to do it, what we're doing here is we're putting a question in front of the residents and asking them if they want to do it. It has nothing to do with us. It's up I, to I the residents. I didn't say I didn't want to do it. I yeah. said it should be thought well thought out. I, yeah. I, okay, I, I get it. I, I'm just saying. I, I did I, not say I don't want to do it. Definitely yeah, no, not. But, but again, again, if, if you need it to be well thought out, what we've got is a time crunch now. And if you want to change it, we need to change it. Go ahead, Nellie. No, I, I agree that, that we should put this forward. I mean, I don't see the problem with the language. If it's just be based on the post office, then put an exclusion of the post office. And because you, we have to have this done by July 31st. So because this has to be sent to the election board to be able to be put on the ballot on the ballot for November. So uh, we, we really have very little amount of time to get this done. So I think that if you're if you if you're if the desire is to tweak it a little bit, I agree on putting this. And I think 75% is a good number um, because these are properties that are worth millions of dollars and should not be given away like they're pieces of candy. And regarding the P3, the the commission was trying to change the um, the uh, the chart the zoning so they didn't have to go in front of the in front of the uh, voters. To put this out there so we need to protect our our la town owned property and make sure that that p3 never happens again Charles. um so i agree with changing if there's anything that the rest of the commissioners change then we can uh, uh, look thank at you. this from here to the end of the month thank you charles yeah uh thank you all um i tend to believe that that this measure is best presented um you know as since the charter is really like our constitution, I think that it should be put forward in a way that has meaning um, it, about protecting public resources and public lands for the public. You know, just as the, um, the pension funds need to be managed with the utmost care, just as our beaches need to be protected for the public with the utmost care, um, you know, the town properties are, are so valuable. They're jewels in the crown of Surfside. Um, and I think that that lends itself better to a ballot question and frankly to the charter uh, because um, you know people could say the sale and lease for longer than two years. Well, then they could do a year and 10 months over and over and over and over. Or they could say, okay, well, that's not town property because it's technically access to the beaches, which are the, uh, the state of Florida. And so, I, and I also think it's confusing to uh, to the public when they're and voters with all of these nuances. Um, excuse me. Uh, I also want to put a, you know a call out to you know even though we have corruption in Florida, South Florida. Um, you know, to this day, there are kickbacks, which is part of the culture. Um, you know, our democracy worked in Surfside. It worked. The voters spoke. There were watchdog groups that, that, that uh, you know, called it out. The one-on-one -on -one meetings that didn't need to be recorded. Um, you know, it was a clear process that, that was intentionally kind of subverting um, the, 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 voting, the voters, subverting sunshine laws, in my opinion. Um, and I'm not a lawyer either. Um, so I, I like to be clear. I, I like to be visionary. I do like then referring it to the town uh, professionals for the best solutions. And uh, given the, the, the issues that we present to them and the fixes that we want to have, uh, we've seen that with, the, with uh, beach furniture. 
um, which, you know, we're moving forward on that. And, um, and I think that's when we're at our best as a commission. Um, so that's what I have to say about this. Very good. Um, anybody else on that subject? Eliana? I agree with Commissioner Tuffle. I, I think we all agree that we want some variation of this on the ballot and that this is worth the time, the money, the effort. And we want this 100% lock stock on the ballot. We just are, the only thing that we're talking about is the language. And I do think we need to defer to our town attorney in a very, we need to prioritize this. So everything else is not an emergency. Okay, so we well, let, dead, let me we ask you a question. Here. Let me ask you a question, Commissioner. Uh -huh. If the town attorney opines on it and gives you great language, beautiful poetic language, and I call an emergency meeting for next Monday, will you feel better about it? I'm there, absolutely. And here's the thing though. All right, we, great. We, just okay, like that's what the, we're gonna do. That's let, what we're hold gonna on. do. Can I finish? Yeah. We can, and again, the, our direction, you know, the town attorney takes direction from us. So I think we just need to be very clear now what we're trying to do. Let's just, you know, we can each sum it up what we want this to look like. And then she's got to come back with a easy to understand ballot question that will amend our charter to prevent, you know, to make sure that any time there's going to be a lease or sale of property for longer than whatever time amount of time we think is fine, it has well, to go. Two years, two years is fine, and it's up to you to decide, not the town attorney. Okay, so, so I, I would need to, I would need to do more research to find out whether two years. Because to me, well, no, no. How about, how about we talk about it? Because I'll tell you, if you do a two-year lease that expires when the new commission comes into office, the new commission then gets to decide whether or not. The lease gets renewed. Okay, so if the tenant doesn't want a two year lease, then you rent it to somebody else. It's not complicated. Right, but but here's the thing for something, I, again, it, it's not something that I can, we, we're just talking about this now. We have other items to get to. We can I keep saying that, but we're talking about this now. Let's correct. But I, but for me, here's the thing I would need to look at what the structure of our deal looks like with the post office, for example. Two years is not going to, it's not going to be exactly when we get elected and new people get elected. I don't know whether two years, it may be the right number, but I just don't know, want to commit to, I'm not going to commit to that at this moment. Look, because here, I do it's, 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 first of all, it's, it's not a question. I'll get to you, Vice Mayor, in a second. It's not a question. It's a principal question. Right. Do you want elected officials making leases for longer than two years? And the answer is, Yes or no? Do you want them to be able to make leases for 99 years? I think we agree that no. it's not 99 years, right? Right. It's so not it's somewhere years. between one year and 99 years. Now, the question is, is what is the impact of a seven-year lease or a five-year lease? Okay. The impact of that is multi manifold. Okay. There, there are a lot of impacts in that. Could the rent be too low for the remaining four years? Okay. If it's an unfair lease, you can't fix it for four more years. However, if you have a two-year lease and everybody knows that the town will only sign a two-year lease, okay, then they adapt to that. However, if there's somebody that needs a very special long-term lease, then the voters decide that. They decide whether the impact of that long-term lease is beneficial for the residents or not, not the, not the elected officials. So all I'm saying is, listen, you're, the, the, the bottom line is we're talking about the prohibition of sale, okay, and you're hung up on the number of years on the lease. So if you're hung up on that, Okay, you make a recommendation. The town attorney doesn't decide that. The elected officials decide that. Okay. Right, but I, but I, but I do trust the town attorney's expertise and being able to look at what other towns. But it's not. That, but you understand, it's not a legal question. It, okay, it's so all question. I'm saying, all I'm saying is that I want to make sure that whatever we are drafting and passing withstands legal scrutiny, which means that not you, not me, not anyone here needs to have the final say on it. Just like you That's said that. Right. that Listen, okay. I get it. Oh, yeah, it has to stick. It has okay. to stick. Go ahead. Okay, I, I think this, you know, put it this way. We're in office for two years. I don't think this is going to happen before we leave office. So I think this is something that could go on the next ballot. I don't know. Well, no, I don't agree with no, that. No, I'd like to do this now because okay, it's, okay, it's, well, well, like okay. well, well, I think though, okay, you're hung up on the two year thing. I'm looking at the word lease and I'm like, well, wait a minute, we lease out the concession at the community center. Is that affected by this? Yeah, it is. It is. It is. And it should be only two years. And every two years, it should it be. Is only I think years. it's less than two years, actually. All right. Yeah. Well, but, um, 
Okay, well, well, then we need to tweak this language. I'm not, yeah, I'm not in favor of having another mayor. meeting I'll get you Monday. Can we have this added to Tuesday's agenda? Because I do not want to have another meeting. Yeah, let's just these add it to Tuesday's agenda. Money. These no. meetings cost us money, and they cost no, us no, a lot of not, time. Not, and and that's time we don't so have. Is it that nobody's agenda. raising their guys, hands here anymore? Guys, it's just no, everybody talking. Talk. Talk. Okay, okay. We, do we want to go to where everybody's muted? I don't think so. Okay, the bottom line is, is no, we're not going to add it to the next regular commission agenda. It's already too big. This is an issue that was time sensitive that needs to be, you either are against it or for it, and that's fine. If you're against it, you're against it. Go ahead, Nellie. If, I, I, I honestly think that this, the way it's written, it's fine. If you want to add another year or take another year, if it's just the time, let the rest of the commission vote because it's not only Eliana's opinion. It's the rest of us. And if the rest of us think that we that it's fine just the way it is, then let's vote on it. And if not, then let's vote to tweak it and come back on it another day before July 31st. Because I honestly think that this is a very, very important item that definitely needs to be on our on our uh, ballot for this November. Thank you. Charles, did you have your hand up? Um, no, but I, I mean, I see how this is important. Um, specifically for the P3. Um, I just don't think it's broad enough to, to encompass the things that we aren't seeing that are going to come up, um, especially if you look at the things that are very common in Florida. I mean, the entire municipalities that blocked off all their street ends for public access to the beaches, like that happened under, under elected, you know, officials' watches. Um, Ball Harbor, our neighbor, you know, and um, I wish that people in Ball Harbor, or I, I, I bet a lot of people in Ball Harbor wish that there was something in place to prevent that. Okay, thank you, Vice Mayor. And then- Yes, uh, I, I just want to say that I have questions about it and I think it could be written better. That does not mean I'm against this. So please, Mayor, don't make these assumptions about me. I support this 100%. Okay, well, uh, well, good. If better you language. It, if you support it 100% with better language, Let's hear what your better language is because we're never going to get it done. Well, it's I can't write something on the fly. I need no. to have this. Uh, okay, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to call. You didn't send us this on an email. I'm, I'm seeing this for the first time here now. Yep. I don't yep. have time to review it and write something better. That's fine. I'm going to I'm going to call a special meeting for next week and you'll get a chance to review it. Go ahead, uh, Eliana. Okay, so we actually have room on the, on the, on the agenda. On the, this is the most important thing that we can do for residents. Exactly. So we can do this, again, we can do this on the Tuesday meeting, all right, because the beach chair thing is not on it because it was by, their, by mistake because it, it was not ready, all right? So we can put this on here and we should each have an opportunity to talk to the attorney and just make sure that the, the language that we pick sticks because if That's we fine. put ballot- I, I, I agree, I agree. Okay, okay. well, let's do that because I think we're agreeing, hold on, Nellie. I think we're agreeing yes. that it seems like, you know, I, I don't have a problem with it. This was just my proposed language. And if you guys have a better idea or better language, guess what? I love it. I'm all for it. But I just want to get it done. And I'll tell you what, more importantly, I want to get done. I want to give the residents the choice. I don't want it to be our choice. I don't want to presume that we know better than they know. Okay? Correct. Let's, my, go, my only, let's Mayor, go to the next, let's go to the next question. Hold on, let me just say something. My, the, oh, my only concern is that I want to make sure that whatever we put on the ballot sticks, which means it needs to be legally vetted that's going to withhold scrutiny afterwards. That's, so that's fine. Not, and we're going to do that. And, and, and the attorney is going to be charged with that job Great. between now and our special meeting next week. Okay. Ballot Perfect. question number four. Shall the charter be amended to provide for a prohibition against and a requirement that there be a public referendum for the town taking out any loan or borrowing of any type which would put the town into debt for more than 10% of its annual property tax revenue and which could not be fully amortized within a total of five years without a super majority of at least four members of the town commission voting to approve the measure, which shall subsequently be followed and approved by a public referendum in which at least 75% of voters approve. Now, I just want to introduce this and say that it's indexed to the annual property tax revenue because over time that number gets bigger and so will the number the 10 percent so it's a relative number that will move on the scale according to what our revenues go i think that nelly had her hand up first and then eliana 
I think this is a good question. However, I don't agree with four members or 75%. I think this should be about 50, 51%, 55% of the voters. Um, because for example, even right now with undergrounding of the power lines. So now this means that I need to have four people to be able to go push this item through. And honestly, I think it's a much harder thing to get done. I think with just three members of the, of the board as we have them right now is more than enough. I also think that having 75% of the, of the voters vote is, is, is a very high number. So then this way, if, if nothing will ever get done in this town and we'll just continue to put more money and more money in our bank and our town will continue to uh, deplete itself. Our well, electrical lines need to be changed and we can't continue to put more and more money into the bank. Nellie, let me just- let More me than just, enough money in the bank to-, um, Nelly, to let me yes. address, let me just say that, and I agree with you, I agree with you. Let me just say this. We're gonna do a straw poll and I think you're gonna bring it up next because I didn't add it to my list because I know you're gonna bring it up tonight. But I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a straw poll and we're gonna ask the residents if they want to go into debt, okay, uh, specifically to borrow the money to do the undergrounding of the power lines, okay? Once you have the approval of the residents and you know they want to do it, I think this would be less of a hurdle. But I, I get what you're saying, and I, I, I appreciate you're, you're making a good point. Eliana? Okay, this is another... Charles. Is it my turn or...? Yeah, yeah. Eliana, then Charles. Okay. Um, this is again another great. I like this a lot. I like the accountability to the that the voters have to decide whether we're going to be borrowing a lot of money. But with the specifics, I also have some some questions because ten percent of which year's annual tax revenue? Because for example, last year's tax revenue was a lot of money. This year's is going to be nothing. The year after that could be nothing. Uh, it has to be an average of how many years. It, in other words, I'm trying to get this to be more act more specific because it's more than what five years of of av average property tax revenue um because right now for example this would mean that we could borrow because last year's property tax revenue was very very high we need to be able to borrow a lot a lot of money without consulting the voters but not but the problem is we have no money coming in next year could be could be terrible we might not have money to run the community center in a year or two you want to lower lower it well no it needs to be the average of how many years so for example uh, into debt more than let's say ten percent of the past five years in, in annual. Um, okay, that's fair. Years. That's okay? fair. Good. Can right. I, can I say something? Second, no, 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 second, no, 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 no. Eliana's right. talking. Eliana, go ahead. Okay. Second point is I do think that um, I'm not okay. So the four member thing, we're trying to change what majority means again, and I'm not sure that's something we. It's con I'm not sure this is constitutional. Because majority is majority. Well, Eliana, if you had a quorum, you'd have three, and then right. only two people on the town commission could make something happen, and that's what I'm trying to avoid. Right, but you're not really, and an important issue, elected officials are not going to just not show up. Um, but I think, have, like Nellie was saying, the she wants to get the power lines buried. It may not be, she may not have four, but she may have three. So that kind of ties, that would kill that because she doesn't have the four. So maybe having the three is enough. And the 75% of voters, again, I would need to defer to the town attorney. I'm not sure you can change what percent means winning. Because when we run for election, whoever gets 51% Eliana, has to be Eliana, enough. Eliana, that's prescribed in the charter, the way we're elected. As a matter of fact, when I was the mayor, the reason we'd have commissioners vote, uh, the top four commissioners being elected, is because that was my recommendation. Instead of running in groups, where each commissioner has to pair off against somebody else in a separate group. We said the most popular commissioners running as a group will be elected, the four most popular, and then it was changed subsequent to my election. I think it was during Tina's time or maybe before Tina to include the top vote getter of that group would be the vice mayor. Right, so this is something I, I agree with you on the concept, just like the prior one, and I just want the town attorney to take a pass at it. All right, we'll take a and, pass. And I get to come it. back okay. at it. Charles. And I don't know that she can do it by Monday, you, but certainly, certainly a week right. no, no, we'll do it. I so, promise you we'll do it by Monday. It'll be done and you'll get to make a decision, yes or no. Charles, go ahead. 
Sure. So I would support this uh, simply reading, shall the charter be amended to provide for a prohibition against and a requirement that there be a public referendum for the town taking out any loan or borrowing of any type, which would put the town into debt for more than 10% of its average annual property tax revenue over of the previous five-year period um, with a public referendum in which at least 60% of voters approve, which is the um, which is the Florida state threshold by which um, their their uh, ballot referendums pass. I, I okay, like that. Cool. Um, that's that's helpful. Okay, Nellie was next, and then the vice mayor. Okay, um, just to just to clarify what you just said, Charles, if you take an average of five years, correct? Mm -hmm. So that year we we currently have a taxable value of three billion dollars. That you multiply it by five, that's $15 billion, okay? No, 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 it's the average. I was Property talking, tax Charles, revenue. and you let everyone else talk, so please don't interrupt me, okay? And as a matter of fact, if you take 10% of a 50, of, now you made me lost my, of $15 billion, that's $150 million, okay? But, but so that's not the revenue, it's the average. Uh, Commissioner. It's annual tax revenue. So, and I think we're also mis misunderstanding annual tax revenue with um, tourist tax. Those are two different things. The well, annual Nelly. tax revenue is the amount of money that our residents pay in taxes every year, which is based on the millage rate. The, uh, the tourist um, tax is what the, what the hotels pay on, their, on, their, on the residents, that the people, the tourists that come to their hotels and stay there. So that's two different, totally, totally separate items. Not one has nothing to do with the other. I, what we're talking about here is the property tax revenue. So now if you're doing an average of five years, you're, you're pretty much allowing an enormous amount of money. Uh, but oh, it would Nelly, be the Nelly, average Nelly, of the five average. years. Hold, hold on a second, guys. Hold exactly. on a second. The guys. average of five years is 150 hold, hold, million. Hold, hold on um, a second. Hold on a second. Let me explain. We'll do the math. Nelly, Nelly, the property tax revenue for the town right now is about $30 million. Okay, and what, what Eliana is saying is she's saying if it goes, she wants the average. So she wants to take five years of the annual property taxes and divide by five and come up with an average amount and use that number. So oh, okay. in, in the example, it, it, it just if, if, for instance, if the average this year, if the property taxes this year were 30 million, and over the last few years, it was a little less, you might have an average of $27 million, okay? Or it may be higher because you may have had a good year. But the bottom line is, in this formula, you'd only be able to borrow $2.7 million without, without going to the electorate, which is, which is, you know, you could borrow $100 billion if Surfside residents want to do it. But what we're trying to guard against is some elected, some group of elected officials arbitrarily putting the town into debt for huge amounts of money, which already happened. We've already experienced that. Tina, go ahead. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, uh, if, if you're talking about annual property tax revenue, uh, our property tax revenue increased tremendously when the Fendi Chateau came on board and the Surf Club came on board the same year, which I believe was 2017. And um, our revenues would have been less this year, except for the Arte building came on board and is paying property taxes. So uh, unfortunately, like it or not, new development pays more property taxes than the rest of us. Aside from that, this is really something for the finance department to figure out. I know that um, uh, former commissioner Karukin was looking into debt management and wanted a policy for that, which we don't have. So this is a form of uh, policy for that. I totally would support it. I just don't know if the numbers are right. And I don't know how you can really base your property tax revenue on the future. We don't know the future revenues, especially with this COVID. So, um, you know, the past has been good. The past few years has been good. We don't know what the future holds. Okay, Tina, do you understand what this is saying? This is saying, listen, if the town commission thinks they want to borrow a whole lot of money like happened the last time where they borrowed $25 million or $23 million, this would stop them from doing that. Their limit would be $3 million. 
okay? And if they wanted to borrow $23 million, they'd have to go to the electorate and say, hey, is it okay if we borrow $23 million and put you guys in debt for the next 10 years? That's what this is. It has nothing to do with our revenues, whether they're up or down. It's simply a mechanism to stop elected officials from putting the residents into debt without their permission. Now, uh, I'm sorry, Eliana. I, I agree with what we're trying to do here. And I think that the averaging of the years, it doesn't go to the future, but what it does is it, it starts with one great year where a giant property comes online and we make a ton of property tax that year because like a big hotel went on year online that year. You couldn't use that one year as the 10% of what you can borrow without asking the residents. You would just have to take the five years from that year, five years back. You're not going forward. You can't obviously predict forward. Um, it's a better way to establish what our baseline is for debt that we can borrow. I really like this. Um, again, I do think that maybe Jason, our finance director, can help us tweak it. I Eli, Eliana, your mic is uh, is going bad, but I agree with you. Jason will help tweak it. I'll get his input. We'll change it to the average of the last five years. Okay. And, and 60%, uh, we'll, what's that? 60% of voters like Commissioner Kessel would say. Listen, I, does anybody have an objection? Is everybody good with 60%? I prefer 66%, but... Uh, what does the state of Florida do? 60%. Who cares? Right? Who cares? We don't, we don't care what other towns do. We're leading. Okay. Do you, you know, we want to make sure that the voters want it. Okay. I don't care what personally, I don't care what the state of Florida is doing. I don't care what Miami beach is doing. Okay. I care what we're doing. Okay. Let's not, let's not be like others. Go ahead, Charles. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The reason why I do care isn't because we're not better than everyone else. Cause we know Surfside does uh, shine above everyone. <laughs> it's just for simplicity and understanding. Uh, that's why I like to use consistencies um, because a lot of people, you know, don't, don't want to really be involved in, um, in local government. They just trust us and, um, and they don't want to be unnecessarily confused if they're, if, you know, it's, okay. it's that people even vote and that they understand how these things work like ballot questions. Um, and, um, so, uh, yeah, so it's just for simplicity that I like using things. That okay, so, can, so I'm okay with 66%. Okay, so I'm okay with 66% too. Does anybody object to 66% and the average of five years, Nellie? I object. Okay, so we're not voting on it tonight, though. 51, whatever the voting number, the, the, the winning number is, which is, which is 51%. It is. And, and, okay, Charles, and I, I like 60, I think 66 is two thirds majority is, is highly unattainable. Um, so there may be a necessary infrastructure project that would be able to take place. Okay. All right. Six, so is 60% acceptable, Nellie? Every, okay. I Tina's shaking her head. Yes. Listen. If, if, okay. Make it 55%. I mean, you don't want to go too high because then if there's people that really want this, and then for 1% or, 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 I mean, for one person, it, th things are not going to be able to be done. And I think you're going with very high percentages. And a lot of people don't even come out to vote. It's still going to be. Honestly, honestly, 51% or 55%. All right, Nelly, Nelly, I get it. You're, you're, you're good with that. I think that we were at 66% with everybody else. Um, Eliana? I'm okay. Uh, I'd go as low as 60%. Um, but 66 or 60 is fine with me. I don't want to go lower than 60. You want to make a motion to that effect so at least we can nail this thing down? Sure. Um, well, I, I, I'd like to hear what the other committee, if they feel strongly about 66 versus 60, I'm I know I'm, I'm okay Charles, with either one. Charles, how are you with 60? Uh, I, 60 is really what I go for. I think 66 is that extra 6% if you look at statistics and how things go. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, Vice Mayor, are you okay with 60? I'm okay with 60. All right, can I have a motion, please? And what the motion should say is we're going to amend this to add the average of the last five years, and we're going to change 75 to 60. Is there a motion to do that? Um, I could make on. a motion. Okay, Charles has made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Okay, Eliana seconded. Is there any discussion? I had a I, question about... Ma go ahead. 
I would like you to explain the end which could not be fully amortized within a close. Yes. Okay. Years. So that means that that we can't if the commission goes ahead and borrows two point seven million dollars, which is ten percent about of our property tax revenue right now. That's our ability. We we would have to borrow a maximum of two point seven million and pay it off in five years. Amortize means pay it off. I, I don't know that we're going to be, I think if we're in a position where we have to borrow money, I don't see us being able to pay it off in five years. I, I mean, well, when I got then, my mortgage, then, it was then, seven or but, 30. But then it needs to go, then it needs to go to the, to the, to the voters because that's a bigger commitment. You know, if you're not going to be able to pay off and it doesn't have to be a $2.7 million loan, it could be a $500,000 loan. So the commission could borrow 500,000 as long as they could, they stayed under the cap and they paid it off within five years. The commission could do that on their own. Anything well, else the commission could not do. Um, I think it overcomplicates the initiative. Yeah, me too. I think it overcomplicates it. But, but you know what you could, you could end up with, you could end up with a $2.7 million loan that's not paid off for 30 years. If the interest rate is nothing, it doesn't matter how long it takes to pay it off. If it's, uh, it's zero, I disagree. I disagree. If it's zero, I disagree. Go ahead, Nellie. Um, well, I also want to add on here that the, to lower it from four members to three members. I, I, I don't think you should have four members to go voting on this. I think I agree with that. I think that should just be removed. So would you would you mind changing your motion, Charles, okay. to reduce it from four to three? And, um, and doing the yes. I mean, I could I could repeat what I think the motion is. How about go that? Ahead. Ballot question four, shall the charter be amended to provide for a prohibition against and a requirement that there be a public referendum for the town taking out any loan or borrowing of any type, which would put the town into debt from 10% of its average annual property tax revenue of the previous five years with, uh, wait, where are we? The, the referendum, public referendum for which at least 60% of voters approve? Question mark. No, no, you forgot. You so amortization, you forgot the not mentioned the, no. the four members. The, the amortization, I think, is critical because what you don't want to do is you don't want a town coming in, a, a town commission borrowing $22.7 million and locking the town up for 30 years. But the, but the debt is 10% of the annual property tax revenue over that five-year period. So let's say in the, today- the amount of debt, if they, if they stretch it out over 30 years- Charles, still the same debt. example for today, it would be like this commission wanting to borrow, this commission could borrow about $3 million. And if they borrow the $3 million, this prohibition says you got to pay it off within five years or go to the electorate. If you can't pay it off, you just ask for you ask the voters. But it but it, what it does is it constrains the uh, the commission to do something that's very economically sensible because it gets paid off faster. I think I'm just trying to take the power of borrowing out of the hands of elected officials and putting it in the hands of voters. Okay, by extending that, you're saying the elected officials know better. Go ahead, Eliana. But then, if I could just say, Mr. Mayor, really quickly, the way that I read this is that um, it's ten percent of the average annual property tax revenues. That's that um, that is the is is the cutoff that triggers it, and um, and which not could be which could not be fully amortized amortized within total of five years. Because um, we do want things to be paid off in a short period of time. Clearly, you, you pay a lot less in interest. Do you want to increase that to seven years? Um, How long? I, I, just, I just think that, that these projects should, I mean, is it unrealistic to just put these to go to voters? No, no. I mean, listen, I, I just put of that how long in it there. takes to am amortize I, it. I, I put that in there because if we've got to borrow $250,000 to fix six trucks, Okay, we need a loan because we don't have the money. I want right. the commission to be able to make that. Yeah, work. I agree. You don't want to be strapped and have to wait for a public referendum Correct. selection. No. I agree. That's but, dangerous. But I don't dangerous. think there's. I don't think the commission should be in a position to borrow more than three million dollars and commit the town 
to more than five years worth of payments without permission. That's all, Eliana. Okay, but, I get it. Yeah. Real quickly, I think then it's it may be too confusing for a voter reading it to really have a sound you know a sound understanding. We'll educate. We'll educate the voters. Don't worry. Okay, ahead, uh, my I, I think. Sorry, I think if we're in a position where we have to borrow the money, let, let's pretend worst case scenario with the economy. I do think that five years is too short. Let's say we want to buy um, some waterfront property for the town, for the residents to have a waterfront park and a kayak launch and everything else. And I think we have to borrow $3 million to buy that piece of land. That's worth having a little bit of debt for 10, 15 years if we need to. I don't want to have to bind ourselves to fight. And we should be able okay, to do well, that. We're back, without we're, back, we're back to the same problem. So if you believe the commission should have authority to indebt the town for more than five years, not that's, for, that's the problem. I, I think that the amount of money is correct, the 10%, but I think I need a little bit more time than five years because if if, if the economy is such and we don't have the funds to do it ourselves, we may need more time than the How five years. I'm just trying to- How much time do you think you need? Because I need to be able to support it through 10 years. Okay, uh, s seven to 10, I guess. I don't know. Okay, I mean, when Nelly, okay, fine, Nelly. I, I don't think that you should have this amortization either. Um, and in regards to borrowing money to buy uh, a property to expand the uh, the park, we have some money that we can take out of our own reserves. We have almost thirteen million dollars in there, and that's more than fifth. That's about fifty percent of our operating budget, which is a pretty hefty amount of money. So if you have to take out take three million dollars to buy a property that is going to benefit our residents, I don't think that that's a huge a huge deal that that you need to go and borrow money instead of just use the money that we already have. Um, but Nelly, um, let's say they, we might not have the money. Right. Exactly. So that, that I listen, I place, honestly, this we're, we're in the United States. This country has bounced back from bigger things than this. So honestly, no, but, to be saying that we're not going to go back, this is Leon, uh, I don't Nelly. Even it's, just, go into it's, that. it's just it's just a safeguard that I think we think is appropriate for to, to make sure the voters of Surfside have an appropriate say on whether or not they go into debt. You know, we already went into $23 million in debt and that's why the water bills are through the roof. That's why people are suffering, okay? And we're gonna fix that at the next meeting, but the point is, is we don't want that to ever happen again without the voters saying it's okay. That's the point of this whole thing, Charles. So since I made the motion, um, I would like to accept the um, fully amortized within a total of five years. I think that's, that's reasonable five year period. Um, okay, um, that's good. Okay, yeah, now okay with that. Are we, are we going back to 66% on this too? No, 60. 60, okay, Eliana? I'd like to, uh, again, um, I'm okay with the amortization. I just, I'm, I'm not sure of the year. So I would like to ask Jason, our finance guy for, I just like to have a phone call with him not meeting before we come back with the final language. I, I'm happy with the 60% and I'm okay if we do the three instead of four members, you know, just a normal, that's fine. I do think we do want the amortization, but I just wanted us to have a little bit more time to pay it back in the event that we really have to borrow it it may take longer. I mean, most loan, when I get my house, it's like 15 or 30 years. It's not a five-year uh, option. But you, Seven you, still, years. you still have the option to go to the voters two times a year, okay? Once in November and once in March, okay? Well, so if we're gonna if we're gonna do something big and put Surfside into debt, I think it's enough to go back to the voters if we're gonna spend more than $3 million or we're gonna commit them to more than five or seven years worth of payments, that's all. I, I'd like to see it at seven years is, is better to give it a little bit more time. Okay, that's fine. I'm so, okay with that. I'll change, I can change it to seven years. And uh, I, I'll add too, if there's a real emergency, we can call a special election, you know, it's- Yeah, of course, of course. So Charles, I'm gonna recount your motion. So you're gonna say the average of five years worth of property tax revenue, you're gonna change five years to seven years you're going to make it three members and not four members, and you're going to change it to 60% of the voters to approve. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. And Is there a second to that motion? Leave out the three of the five since that's the norm. Well, well we're just going to change supermajority to three members, right? Um, if it's necessary. Otherwise, I'm all for the simplest ballot questions possible. Right. Okay. Wouldn't right. it be a given already that it would have to be three of the five, or we wouldn't even be talking about it? 
Okay, well, that is a given. I would say given. Delta so we'll just say majority. we'll just change it to a majority of the five members, correct? At least three. Is that correct? Um, I think that the language isn't necessary in the ballot question because it is, Charles, because if you have three people at a meeting one day, okay, and you have two people. Oh, two out of the I gotcha. Two out of the three would be the majority. Okay. Yeah. I'm cool with that. Thank you. Yeah. Right, thank you. Okay, that, Eliana. That's actually a good point because I noticed when I was looking back on some of the more controversial votes, some of the commissioners didn't even show up for it. Like when they did that parking deal, they, like two people didn't even show up. Okay. So that okay. went so forward let's, without. Let's, let's, listen, I'm going to restate the motion one more time for everybody, and then I'm going to call the roll. Okay. So we're going to change it to from annual property tax revenue to an average of the preceding five years annual property tax revenue. We're going to change at least four members to three members, and we're going to change uh, seventy-five percent to sixty percent. Is that correct, motion maker? And the five to correct. seven years. And the, and the he's, five yeah, he's, he said that correct. Um, the only thing you didn't say is the average of the five-year period. Yeah, I did say that. I did say that. The average. I didn't hear it, but okay. yes, the average, average of the five-year period. I'll say it one more time. Here we go. The average of the annual property tax revenue over five years. Okay, amortized within seven years, the four members gets changed to three members, and the 75% gets changed to 60%. Correct. That's my motion. All right. All right. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you call the roll on that? And hold on, one question. Sorry. Okay, Eliana. Eliana. This, what? You've been talking, we've been talking about this for an hour. Go ahead. I, I know, but this is important because this is, this is something we want to do. Um, are we going to get a chance, like I can talk to Jason and we can have the lawyers take a look at this before we adopt it for final for the ballot, correct? We'll, we'll have the next no, week. No, the next final week, is right we'll now, it, isn't it? Hold, hold on a second. No. We're going to put it into final. We're going to put it into final language for you to approve. But this is just to go ahead and move forward to put it into a final language, which we'll ultimately approve. Okay, so that the lawyer and Jason will take a look at it. Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Call the roll, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Balsar? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Burkett? Yes. Caleb McCary? Wow, that was great, Commission. That was great. Good, good work. We got one done. Okay, go to the next one, George. What's the next question? Was there a five? We're gonna we got the P3 done too. We just don't have the exact language yet. Okay. Well, uh, listen, we're gonna we're gonna come back with the exact language. Um, okay, I'm I think I'm done here because we need to okay, well this one is a little bit delicate because is does anybody object to going back to the original language that existed before the deceptive ballot question that was had in 2012? Because basically what this says is we will refer to the original language adopted by a vote of over 92% of the voters of Surside on March 16, 2004. So we're basically just putting it back like it was, which reinstitutes the protections that were there. Yes, Eliana. This one is so out of my, I can't make a decision on this. I don't know what any of this means. I would need, this is why we have these zoning workshops. We can do something like this, and take the next two years to figure it out, but I don't feel like we can. Okay, we're good. I got you. Tonight. Anybody else want to comment? Charles? Uh, yes, just that this is an example of one where even if we educate the voters, I think they're, sit they're sitting in the booth for so long, kind of, you know, to get it right, um, it's probably not worth it. Okay, Nellie? Vice Mayor. Yes, um, I'd like to see the memo from uh, 2014, the legal opinion, because that was new to me. Actually, Mayor, when you mentioned this at the very beginning of the meeting, you mentioned it having something to do with the P3. I've never seen that memo. Um, this had nothing to do with the P3. Um, I, I'd like to see what that memo says, the legal opinion. And if it's correct, as you had stated, then um, it should be voided, whatever the change was. It's not so much that we need to go back to it. I think that 
again, as I had mentioned before, uh, in regards to the zoning, if we um, amend the zoning fr from 2011, where the gross acreage, you know, acreage was changed to gross acreage, that would solve the issue of- yeah, Guys, remember, remember, Vice Mayor, there's two different things going on here. One, okay. the, the commission can fiddle with the zoning ordinance, for instance, that acreage thing, all they want. Okay, that what we're doing with the ballot questions in the charter is we're putting in place hard stops, which mean no, no, which means no matter what any commission does, they can never, never go beyond that without a vote of the people. So there's two different questions. So yes, we're going to fix the zoning code. We're we're going to come back with a new proposal on that, as we've discussed. But what this is is this is the cap. This is the outside limit. To where any any code could go, so it's it it stops any of the fiddling that future commissions might do, which which extend the development rights beyond what the original charter said they could. Okay, I wasn't finished speaking. Um, I I think it would be more beneficial if we had seen all these questions in advance. We did not receive an agenda packet, so we didn't have time to. Uh, go over these and ask questions. Um, and, as, and as far as the memo you pointed out, I mean, it was like at least, uh, what, six or seven pages. I'd like to see that memo of the legal opinion because uh, that changes everything about this. You know, yeah. maybe you just void it out because it wasn't done legally. I don't know that. I'd like the attorney to weigh in on this. Okay. This is new information that we just received tonight. You know, it, it, it was never presented to us previously. We're gonna get you, we're gonna get you all that stuff including the comments from the attorney and Jason on these other ballot issues. Eliana? I would like to not, I, like I said before, but I, I don't, I would like this to be as simple as possible for the voters to do the substantial things we need to do, which is the P3 thing, the borrowing money, and then if Nelly wanted to swap hole on undergrounding, which we haven't even gotten to yet, then we could do that. Something like this is so loaded and we don't we don't even understand it. We don't know how the voters are understanding it. They're looking to change zoning code. Those are the people. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. You're, 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 you're all garbled. Okay. I said, I thought we were already going to change the acreage, the gross acreage back to acreage and make those changes. We don't need to do this. Let's keep the ballot as clean as possible. We have one thing about borrowing money. We have a thing about the P3, and we have a straw item about the idea of bearing power lines. If Nelly wants something like that, that's not binding anyway. I'm okay with that. I think that this is going to invite people to be, um, I don't know, they're going to scrutinize the other things, or I don't even understand this one, and I think it's too much for voters, and we're not going to have it in time for the deadline. So let's just do that. We have the next two years to come up with whatever perfect zoning fix that you think we need, Mr. Mayor, and I'm happy to support it, but I can't be rushed into it. And I'd rather just keep things clear for the voters so they can go in there and vote yes, 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 with a clean conscience and not okay. think they're being Eliana, tricked or anything. Eliana, I appreciate the comments, but I will say this. Uh, you've been aware, the commission has been aware of this charter fraud for months. We've dealt with it in depth. We've taught, we've compared the old language with the new language we've had presentations on it so the point the point i'm making is is yes we're going to fix the zoning code as it exists now but this is a whole this is a whole different thing so by not by not by not supporting the going back to the charter protections what you're saying is that you know we want to leave we want to leave all the zoning decisions in the hands of this commission and future commissions, rather than saying, you know, you guys cannot go beyond a certain point. And that's what we're talking about with this ballot question. We're saying, put it back to the way it was on March 16th, 2004, and all those protections are in there. And then we can fix the zoning code too. But by saying that you don't want to do this, what you're saying is that you trust this commission and future commissions to to draft zoning laws that will comply with the wishes of the town residents, which is absolutely antithetical to what happened over the past 10 years because, because they eviscerated this particular charter amendment, we ended up with a wild zoning code that permitted all kinds of crazy, crazy things. Okay. So, 
Charles Mr. Hall. Mayor, if I might suggest, maybe you take this one back and put it in wording that we can more easily understand. understand and I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll bring it back at next week's meeting. Um, Vice Mayor. Uh, yeah, I, I also question how necessary this is because, um, you know, if if what you were saying is that it was done, you know, the charter amendment was done illegally because it was not at a, at a regular election, then that it, we, it should be voided. So I don't know that it has to become a ballot question. Well, Can we just legally have it voided because yeah, it wasn't yeah. done properly? You're right. You're right. And the answer is you're probably right. But in order to really make it very clear without having to fight about it legally and have lawyers run up big bills, we could easily put it in front of the residents and say, hey, listen, it's void. It was void because it wasn't, but we want to be sure we don't want to have the fights. So this would basically put us back to where we were and it would be crystal clear instead of a little muddy. Eliana? Okay, oh, well, I wasn't finished. Um, the question's not clear because unless you know what section four is, you don't know what this is in reference to. So it, it, there needs to be some kind of reference of what it's changing. It's, we'll it's not it. clear. I'll, I'll fix it, thank you. Eliana? I would like to not go down this rabbit hole at all because it doesn't make any sense to me. Like Tina was saying, if it was void, and if it was done improperly, then it's no legal bill. It's it's not valid, okay? This is going to be a big legal bill. We can't. I can't even support it because I don't know what it means. We're gonna get sued by every single person in town. I don't even know what this means. So, and this is not the, and please stop saying it. I don't support something, it means that I love a lot. I think about our try vision to, try for the to, town. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Try to reconnect your microphone. It's not clear. Okay. Is that better? Yes. Okay. What I'm saying is we agree on a vision for the town. I don't, I, I, I'm not going to be ready to deal with this. Not next week either. The only presentations we've had so far at the zoning meeting were by you, not by the new zoning person we're getting, not by the expert. We have two years and you can call a special election if you'd like next year. We can't hear you, Eliana. It's garbled again. If we feel like we need to do something, we can call a special election next year. We can put this on the regular scheduled election in two years. That we spent a lot of time thinking about them being uncomfortable. Okay. Just like Eliana, you said, you were boondoggled last time. I don't want to be. I don't want to be hoodwinked either. So I'd like to just move on from this and focus on the ones that we agree on. And I think I'll tell you, you know, what. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm going to bring it back. As the vice mayor said, we're going to make it a little more clear, okay? But the bottom line is, just so you know, okay, it's all about what we've been talking about for four months now, and that is, is we want to have a charter amendment which caps the amount of development possible in town, okay? So we're going to go to the next subject, and that is uh, uh, Jose. Last last comment. I want to bring up the uh, salary issue just for clarification. I thought Nellie wanted a straw poll. Well, she does, and she's gonna we're, she's gonna bring that up in a minute. But there was some conversation about the salary because that's pertinent. That's related to one of the ballot questions. Can you bring it up, please? We, we agreed that? not to do that ballot question. We didn't agree to do anything yet. We did. I thought we did. I want to show you what it says. Jose, do you have it? Jose, are you there? Yes, I'm putting it up right now. Can I make a motion? Yeah. Okay, I'd like to make a motion that we not in, indulge that amendment number one. We all four to one agree we don't want to go down that route. So let's just move on and get to Nellie's item that she would like to get to next. All right, is there a second to that motion? Okay, there's a second. Any discussion? I'd like to discuss it. You know, I just like to show you as part of my discussion what the actual language regarding salary says. And here's what it says. Commencing with the term of office beginning at 8 p.m. on the day following the general election, the mayors and members of the commission shall be paid the sum of $1 per year for what? They'll be paid a dollar a year for attending monthly meetings, irrespective of the number of meetings. It doesn't say anything about getting paid for anything else. It just talks about the pay for meetings. Okay, so it's very, very vague. And the reason I put the question forward was because I wanted to make it very, very clear. This commission, as far as I'm concerned, is not gonna get paid 
and more than a dollar is not going to get any of the other benefits, pension, health care, or whatever else um, a lot of commissioners do in other cities, um, because Surfside, I don't think the residents of Surfside want it. Go ahead, Eliana. So four of us disagreed with you politely, and four of us would like to move on because four of us think that in an ideal world, we should be getting paid and there should be health benefits, but I'm not gonna vote on that to benefit myself. We can do that in two years, maybe. Okay, let's just the, move on. The motion is on the table and there's still discussion, Vice Mayor. Yeah, I just wanna say that I, I've served office for uh, four years and I got a dollar a year and I never got any other compensation. I got reimbursement for uh, travel to League of Cities and for uh, travel to the meetings of the League of Cities. So I, you know, there is no other compensation. It's a dollar a year. If other commissions pr prior to where I served got compensation, you know, it, maybe it had to do with the attorneys that were uh, serving uh, because our attorney was very clear about compensation. Uh, and I would say uh, there was a different attorney when I first was elected, same thing. Okay, well, listen, I think it's, I think I appreciate the fact that uh, you served for four years. That makes two of us, okay? So I served four years too, and I didn't get paid. And I'm just, I, and, and I'm not worried about not getting paid in the future. I'm not here to get paid. I'm not here to get a pension. I'm not here to get health care. I'm not here to get other bennies. Okay, and, and I'm not either, and it's already in the charter. That's what I'm saying. This is already in there. But anybody reading, anybody watching the screen can see that that's not correct. Okay, Charles. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I happen to like the language that's in the original charter. Um, I, uh, I think it's very pointed, and I think it should just be, just be kept as is. Our founding fathers were smart. Okay, we're moving on because we're gonna take the vote. Go ahead, call the question, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Salazar. This is to, to not address the first this ballot question. On. Yes, move on, yes. Commissioner Castle. Yes. Commissioner Velasquez. Yes. Vice Mayor Paul. Yes. Chair Burkett. Okay, you're gonna be surprised. Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. All right, very good, okay. Ooh. Who wants to bring the next uh, ballot question up? Uh, Sandra, you have a ballot question? I don't know. <laughs> I just want to um, um, provide a clarification. In a previous meeting, I was um, asked to contact the elections department to ask to add one ballot question, and that's what we were approved for. I think I actually told them two after a second email, but not five, not four, not it's only and I'm not sure if they will approve it at this point. So I just wanted to bring that up and make sure that. All right, well, listen, we're doing the best we can. We're doing the best we can. And that's the reason we're having the meeting so we can give you enough time to inquire. Okay, that's what we're doing here. And we're just trying to make it happen. Go ahead, Nellie. Well, um, well, then we have to figure out which are the most important questions. And to be honest with you, undergrounding of the power lines was the first option put on the table and that should be on the on the ballot before yeah, anything why else. You, you, why don't you go into your presentation? Because I know you've been well, talking I about- I thought we were gonna do this on July 14th, so I'm really more prepared for July 14th, but to give an overview of what we're, what what it is, it's, um, I guess every, did everyone get the email of the resolution, Lily, uh, today? It's on everyone's agenda packet. Okay, so everyone got the uh, the resolution for the undergrounding of the power lines. It's very simple. It's pretty much just asking everyone, uh, asking the residents if they're interested in um, in uh, the undergrounding of the power lines. It's actually page, uh, it's page 295 in your booklets if you can take out your booklets. Since we're gonna be discussing this right now, I thought we were gonna do this on Tuesday, but I'm ready if you guys are. Well, Nelly, the sooner we get it, the sooner we get Absolutely. it. Absolutely. So go ahead, just read it to us. Tell us what, okay. tell us what it says. So the resolution, I'm just gonna read the part where the actual question. Okay. Um, okay, so the question says, do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside power lines and, and other utilities, including cable and telephone lines in order to improve safety, promote sustainability and resiliency in the case of hurricanes and enhance the aesthetics 
uh, the aesthetic of the uh, character of the town. That's pretty much the okay. question. Does, do you want to make a motion to put that on the ballot? Absolutely. I'd like to make a motion to put that resolution on the ballot. That? that language on the ballot, yes. Does anybody want to second that? Okay, I'll pass the gavel over to the vice mayor and I'll second it. Okay. Oh, Charles was going to second it. I don't know. Charles, are you going to second that? Um, yeah, I would second it. I just have some discussion uh, with the commissioner. Well, I just want to, <laughs> let's get the second. So Charles, you're going to second okay. that. And, uh, um, yeah, I'll second it. Okay, go ahead. You're the first one to have your hand up and then we'll go to Eliana. Uh, sure. Um, the, the, the second or the, the final two phrases that you used, um, I think uh, related to like aesthetics is the last one. And then the, the prior one is about sustainability. Um, I, th I think that you should, we should drop those because they're, they're, um, they're kind of presupposing conclusions. Like someone may not think that it's aesthetic um, and then someone else may not think it's sustainable. Does that make sense? Um. Less, yeah, um, I do respect your opinion, Charles. However, I do disagree because it has been proven in several cities that do have undergrounding of power lines that it is resilient and it is sustainable. And it is, of course, for aesthetics as well. I mean, do you like to see all those power lines all over the place? I mean, they look ugly. They make our town look like a third world country. Um, so honestly, I, I for aesthetics is, is one of the major things. And and um, and uh, honestly, even talking about cost, let's talk about cost in this whole thing because I see someone asking about this on the on the chat here. This we received a um, if you guys, I mean that's why I was ready to talk about this on Tuesday, not really today. Um, but if if you all look at to page the next one to page one ninety eight, so that I guess that would be one ninety nine. Um, there was a cost estimate from FPL. Uh, back in 2013, that was 14920 That cost included <clears throat> all of FPL, AT&T, the cable and other costs, which um, um, would be, you know, the boring, direct boring or um, how they would install this, street lighting and everything. The way I'm proposing to pay for this is to try to get as many grants as we possibly can. Of course, we know that during this uh, pandemic and stuff, we've got no one knows what we can get. But even regardless of getting any money from anywhere, this town has enough money to pay for this without even having to go get any grants. We approximately receive anywhere from two to $3 million every year that we put in our reserves. We already have $13 million in our reserves as of right now. That's 50% of our operating budget. Most towns have 25%. So we have a hefty bank account. So we don't need to continue to put any more money into this account without taking care of the things that these that the residents of this town want. So that being said, we would not even have to raise the millage rate on our residents. None of the residents. Oh, sorry. Oh, what happened there? Oh, no, okay. You no. put the you put the question up. <laughs> the, the screen just changed. Anyway, as I was saying, <clears throat> um, where was I? Okay, so um, based on what I'm saying, with a millage rate of 4.4, which is what we currently have, we would be getting anywhere uh, approximately two to three million dollars a year in revenue that an additional revenue reserve revenue that we put into our that otherwise would be going into our bank account. So instead of taking that money and putting it into the bank account, why can't we just get a geo bond and pay for this ourselves and pay it from this future revenue that we would be getting every year? Okay, because honestly, I don't see our taxable value going down to $1.1 billion as, if it, as it was back in 2010. That being said, nobody's taxes would go up yet everybody would get the undergrounding of the power lines. The only additional cost that a resident would have to endure would be um, bringing the power line from the curb to their home, which um, I've been trying to get a more of a uh, accurate number on that, but it's anywhere from $1,500 to $2,500, which if a resident can't afford that, the town would be 
footing the bill and, and charging people on a monthly basis, which we could do it anywhere from 12 months, 24 months, 36 months. Golden Beach did it like that. They, they, their, their cost was a little higher because their lots are much bigger than ours. Um, so they, I think theirs was like uh, $3,000 if I'm not wrong. And what they did, they gave their residents up to, um, I believe it was five years to pay off those um, $3,000. The ones that didn't want to have the, to pay the $3,000 in one shot, or they just separated it in different in payments throughout a, set, a certain amount of time. That would be honestly the only cost to our residents. Other than that, it would be every, everything would come from the money that we, we already collect in taxes. Okay. Well, I listen, see you have a, if anyone has a question, I'd be more than happy Kelly, to answer. Let, 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 let me, and I'm going to go around the table now, but let's just be clear. What this is, is it's straw poll. And basically you're asking residents because a lot of people have said, oh, most of the residents don't want it. And a lot of people said most of the residents do want it. This will definitively determine really how residents feel. And in, in, and in the case that residents support it, then we can go to work. Uh, first was exactly. Dr. And then, uh, Eliana. You had your uh, hand? Yes, I did. Uh, I think Eliana was first, but okay. Um, so yeah, I received the book like, I don't know, at 4.30 this afternoon. I didn't really have time to review everything in here, but I thought that when we first discussed putting this on the ballot, and I did expect us to talk about it tonight, so it was good to receive the, you know, I looked at the resolution, but I didn't get to read all the other material, but I thought that when we first discussed putting this on the ballot, we discussed also including the cost. So that's not included. I'm not comfortable with that. I do want this to go to the voters. I think it's important that it goes to the voters, but I don't think we're giving them enough inform information to vote on. Yeah. So that's where I have a little problem with this and it could be fixed by Tuesday when we actually have to vote on it. Yeah, so. that's a very good point, Tina. Thank you. And I, and I agree with you. We should have a number on there. Um, yeah, we just thought of doing this in a more simple manner, but I agree with you. It should be there. Okay, Eliana. So I have a couple of things here. I think this is, a, I think it's a good idea, the concept of it, um, but I have a couple of questions. One is I agree with Commissioner Kessel. This is a, this is a very leading question. This would get, you couldn't ask this in a court of law. This is so leading. You can't say that this is sustainable or resilient because I don't even, I haven't even seen the study about whether this improves your um, service. Because I know that in a town with flood issues, the water becomes a problem. And so it doesn't necessarily improve your um, your service and, and, and your power. So that's important for me. Um, also, I think aesthetic character that again is a it, that is a completely um, that's a that's one person's perspective. There are some houses in town that people think are gorgeous that I think are horrible, and vice versa. So I don't think you can you know I think it's leading very leading to say it's almost like saying hey do you want this amazing great wonderful thing that there's nothing bad about it because it, we don't know if it actually improves service or not. And the money is very important. The, the reason why this is not a big deal either way is because it's non-binding. We might as well do a survey monkey and accomplish the same thing um, and save ourselves the $7,000. Because when we, if we, let's say everyone votes that they do want this, we still are gonna have to borrow a whole lot of money to do it because there's not, you know, the, the governor already vetoed our Abbott flooding money, okay? We're not even getting that money anymore because the governor just vetoed that. The grant money that we thought we were getting for Abbott flooding is gone bye-bye. So that's more important to residents than borrowing money for, this is secondary. When you have water coming into your living room or your garage, that's more important. Um, this is non-binding. So when we do have to borrow the money, we're gonna have to go to the voters anyway. So I think, I do like this and I do think we should have this on the ballot, but I do think we're better off waiting till we have the actual numbers and are ready to do it because this isn't even going to mean anything because we haven't even felt the impact of the economy and how many houses are going to be in foreclosure and how many people are going to have to move. I mean, we are looking at a really, really bad economic cycle. Um, really, really bad. Um, we've never experienced anything like this in, in our lifetimes. So I don't want to make commitments that this is non-binding. So it's not commitment, but then what is it? It's just a serving monkey. And if we're spending the money, I think we'll rather make changes into the into the charter that are going to do things like prevent the P3s, prevent the borrowing of money without residents approving it, and maybe even a charter thing like the mayor wants to do with, if we can understand it, to do the zoning. 
This, I think, is if we can throw in an extra question and it doesn't cost us a lot of money and it's non-binding, I think it's lovely, but I think we're better off waiting and having an actual proposal. This is how much it's going to cost. This is how long it's going to take. Do you want it? Okay. This Eliana, you're going, you, you made your point. Go ahead, okay. Charles. Do you have any comment? Um, did you ask me, Mr. Mayor? Yes. I, I, um, thank you. I think Commissioner Salzhauer makes a lot of sense with all her points. And, um, and uh, Commissioner Velasquez, I'd ask you to consider that if I was reading this, um, I think more people are going to vote no because of those leading conditions. Because I might agree with everything, but I wouldn't make a direct connection with the aesthetics because the lines really don't bother me and the and and the the notion of the big boxes that I'm I'm told and I've seen in other towns like Palm Coast, for example, nobody wants that electrical box on their lawn. So that could be like a hot issue. Um, so I would vote no just because I don't think it's necessarily an aesthetic win. Um, but that's just me because I'm detail oriented like that in a weird way. Okay. Well let me let me let me comment, Nelly, and then you can wrap it up. Um, a couple of things, Eliana. You know, invoking the COVID crisis as an excuse to not spend money, would you be sitting here saying that you were not going to go ahead and restore the park on 96th Street and spend them? Yes. 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 yes, 100%. I, I think would, that we are in, in okay, uncharted territory right now financially. Hang on a second. You, the answer was yes or no, okay? My comment is, is I wouldn't. You know, we'd be doing the park irrespective of that because that's what we promised, okay? So I think it's disingenuous to say, and, and, and listen, I admire you for just saying that. So you're gonna throw the park overboard because of COVID. That's I'm not, not what I said. What you, I just, you just said that because of COVID, we can't do this. It's not a now, good idea. Stop saying what I said, please. You keep trying to say what I'm saying. What you said, what'd you okay? say? What I said is that we need to be very fiscally conservative right now and not commit ourselves to few, this is gonna cost 15 to $25 million this underground no, project. Not. Okay. No, it's not. Absolutely, not it is. Close. No, it is. Absolutely, it no, is it's not. Stop. Okay, it's my turn to talk. Okay, we have something from FPNL right now. Okay, that's a year or two old, and it says it's 2013. It's not 13. Seven years old. No, it's not. It is. Okay, six point seven million dollars. Okay, but anyway, I'm talking. That's their cost. I'm talking. What do you mean it's their cost? It's we have to put back the driveways. We have to put back the lawns. Do me a favor, okay? It's what not- What driveways are you talking and, about? And that's a scare Nobody's tactic. Nobody's driveways are gonna be pulled out. Hey, hey, oh. Guys, one person at a time, I'm talking, okay? Put that, put, that, uh, put that language back up for a second, please. Okay, it's you're scrolling. Go back, go back to the language because I would disagree that, okay, there it is right there, leave it there. I would disagree that taking all the poles and wires and things hanging off the poles down doesn't enhance the aesthetic character of the town. Okay, if, if, if somebody thinks that leaving those poles and all those wires and everything else that goes along with it is aesthetically pleasing, okay, more pleasing than putting the power lines underground, then that's news to me, okay? but it does promote safety because the power lines don't fall down anymore when they when the winds come okay it does promote promote sustainability and resilience because the power stays on okay when the storm comes as opposed to when it doesn't but here's the main point here's the big point the po and i agree that you know what nelly i think we need to rewrite this so that a we ask the residents definitively it's not a straw poll we put some numbers in there and we say Stop shaking your head, Eliana, because that, you know, I'm talking. The bottom line is, is that we put numbers in there and we say to the residents, hey, here's what FPL told us. You're going to have to hook it up to your house. We will pay for the price to hook it up to your house and add it to your tax bill and you could pay it over five years or whatever. Okay. And do you want to do this or don't you want to do this? Because if you don't want to do it, we'll put it in the drawer and we'll forget about it forever. But what we're trying to do is find out what residents want and the commissioners that are making excuses, okay, or don't want to put it on the ballot, just don't want to give residents the choice, okay, because it's a simple choice, whether it's a straw poll or whether it's a more comprehensive question. Do you guys want to do this? And if they don't want to do it, I'm okay with that. But I, what I'm not okay with is not giving them the choice. 
Okay, now it was Nellie's turn, and then you can go, Eliana, after she's done. Well, you know, it's, it's, listen, this is something that walking around this town, people want. And we cannot continue to put more money and more money. And what, what, what are we saving all this money for? Is it to do the Abbott Avenue parking lot that some people want? No, we should be doing what our residents want. This is something that our residents want. And we, listen, there is no way, and I don't care if your economics goes down or whatever, there is no way that we're gonna go down to $1 billion again in taxable value. That's just not. And I, I, I can't see that ever happening again. So I honestly think that this is something that you should, we're asking the residents, let them, let the residents make the decision. Okay. It's not just your decision. The, the residents are the ones that vote for this commission based on what this commission is going to do for the residents. Let the residents I'm gonna, vote. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you speak, but before you do, um, do we have a motion on the table to, uh, to move this forward? Yes. I thought so. Uh, Madam Clerk, is there a motion pending? Mayor, I do have a motion from Commissioner Velasquez and seconded by Commissioner Castle to approve this ballot question. Okay, sure. very good. Okay, so we're in discussion right now. Eliana, go ahead. Okay, I am, I'm okay with something non-binding. There is no way I'm going through with a binding anything given the uncertainty that we're looking at right now. And I can tell that the other commissioners are probably not going to be going for something binding either. So if you want to have a non-binding to see this, do people like the idea of undergrounding? I also have to caution you, Nellie, I know you went door to door in the residential section. This is a presidential election. We're gonna have huge turnout. Everyone in the condos, condo people outnumber houses three to one. You may, if this loses and nobody wants it, we can't reopen it again. So if you put it on the presidential ballot and it gets a no, we're done as opposed to waiting and having, we're gonna to have to go back out to the voters anyway when we have the numbers and when we have to borrow the money because that's what that's what we already agreed to put on the ballot that we have to agree and the vote has to go to the voters about how much it's gonna cost and when we're gonna pay it back, et cetera. So okay. this has okay. to go to the voters anyway. I'm okay with the non-binding. All right, you said, that already. you said that already, thank right? you. Right, let me make one more point because I am not in favor of the town looking like crap, but we have options in between. We've never held the, the companies accountable to come clean up their wires. We've never had them come and look at putting much less of putting the concrete poles up there that are much more effective and much more resilient than anything <gasps> underground. Oh in a wow. So your idea is to put some concrete ugly poles oh, around town? Nelly, really? Nelly, hold on a second, wow. Nelly. Nelly. Uh, Charles, you had your hand up, and then I want to make a comment. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and and uh, you know, one one thing about this too is, I, and I'm I am very sensitive about the coronavirus as well. And um, I think it's it's very important, Commissioner Velasquez. Um, and um, I, I just want it to be looked at as in the right context because we're going three months down the line. And when I see this question, even though I know it's totally valid, but when I see it on the ballot, um, I think that some people may um, think, wow, it, you know, given that all we're, I'm, all we're dealing with right now, are we going to start to rip up the streets? And is that something to do right now, even cost aside? And how is that going to disrupt my life? How is that going to add an, yet another challenge when we have so many on the table right now? So just be sensitive to that. Um, all right. Um, Charles, Thank you for hearing that everybody supports the idea and the and the ballot initiative to get the non-binding um, straw poll done. Thank you. I want to make a comment. I just want Eliana. I want to invite you to remember when we were talking about the community center, and when I was advocating for putting the question on the ballot, and when the question when the question came back and the town supported my position to build a smaller version of the community center. Do you recall that? I, I actually don't remember. I thought it only went I'm to gonna, the, to I the will, I'm going to tell you okay, about so it. Okay, so I thought it only went to the, to the on polls second. once. That's that's a yes or no question, but I'll, I'll refresh your memory. It actually went to the ballot twice. Why did it go to the ballot twice? I don't I don't recall the second time at all. But actually, we had two votes on it. We had what two were the votes. dates? 
Okay. So funny how you texted me about that before the okay. before we were elected. Okay, but hang on a second. I'm not sure. Remember that. that. Oh, hang what on were a the dates? And Rihanna, we'll get you the dates, okay? But the fact of the matter is, is that the reason I agreed as mayor to put it on the ballot was because you screamed so loudly that you thought that I convinced the voters to vote for it and you wanted another bite at the apple. You campaigned yeah. against uh, Mr. Well, Mayor, you campaigned against the borrowing of the money. You made I people did. think I that did. it was going to cost I, them millions of dollars when it wasn't. Now it was going to cost every resident 50 bucks. Now you, listen, now you remember, okay? But that's I good. remember the first time, yes. I'm glad you remember. There but was you campaigned time. against it. I think you okay. misused your position in office to do that. Okay, right. well, listen, listen that's, that's the difference between you and me. What I did was I went out and I advocated a position, just like I'm going to go out this time with Nelly. And I'm going to tell everybody in Surfside why putting you the power can't. On. You cannot but, talk to Nelly. But but hang on a second. The the point I'm making, when you say to Nelly, it's over and done after the first question, it's never over and done, Commissioner. It's only over and done in your mind. Okay. What 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 it is is we'll keep doing it if it's in the best interest of the residents. We'll keep doing it just like we did it. it. It's not our job to decide okay. what's in the okay. best interest of the residents. Okay. It's the well, residents to decide what's in their best okay. interest. The question, it's not your job to say that it's over and done with, okay? So the point is, is that we're going to have a question, and there's a, there's, a ballot, there's a motion on the table. Does anybody else have any other comments on this subject? Yes. I, I, don't, Nelly, I had a question. No, no, I, have a, ahead, I have a comment. Nelly and then the vice mayor. Before people come to the polls in November, everyone will have workshops. We'll put this on the, um, on the website. We'll do a PowerPoint presentation. We're gonna inform the residents of exactly how we're gonna do this. And to be honest with you, you talk about the condos. If, if a condo owner is not going to pay a dime more than what they're already paying for taxes, then what is the problem? Why would you say no to something that does not affect you in any way possible? They and do I will pay make more. sure, excuse Ariana, me, Ariana, I'm talking. talking. When I talk, when you talk, I be quiet. And when I talk, I deserve respect. Okay? So I will make, we will make meetings with all the associations of all the condos and make sure that the residents are informed, that the condo residents are informed of what this is going to cost and how we're going to make it happen. But it's not right to not let people vote and not let them decide what they want. And we start continue to put more and more and more money into the bank and not do the things that our residents want. And in terms of breaking up the streets, no, we will not be breaking up the streets. Most of those lines are already underground when they opened the lines back in uh, 2012 to do the, um, the uh, wow. lining of our, of our pipes. So we will not be opening the, 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 the streets. And anyway, there's a thing called direct boring. And what they do is in case they do have to open it, it's only done by sections. So it, the, we don't need to open. It, you open a little hole, they push the pipe through there, and then it goes to the next little hole and you patch it up and that's it. It's not a thing that you have to break up anybody's sidewalks or, or parking garages or whatever this thing is. Okay, you know, it, it, let's, the so vice mayor, go ahead. Yes, so um, I do support putting this on the ballot, but I do think residents want to know the costs. Uh, so I don't know if the, if the motion is amended to allow to change this to have the costs. Um, aside from that, I, I think that, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of valid points going around, but, but the, ultimately the residents do have to decide you know, what, what is uh, best. If, and I think that, you know, there's a lot of people that do want this and then there are those that don't. So we won't know unless it's voted on. Thank you, Vice Mayor. Uh, go you. ahead, uh, Eliana, then Charles. So I have two questions. First of all, I wanna make 100% sure this is something that is non-binding because there's no possible way we would have all the information to make this binding. So I would not support anything binding. Second question is I wanna know why it says telephone lines. Are there three people in town that still have a telephone? Yes. Um, so when we when we do stuff like hardwire um, with specific companies, we are not enabling residents to upgrade to new technology because they weren't part of the deal that went into this. So you're aware. 
Art um, tools. Um, yeah, you could say communication lines. Um, and um, so, uh, Commissioner Velasquez, <clears throat> I think that because you're very passionate about passionate about wanting this to go through, um, you, you're at your best, which you just were when you just practically say like what's going to be done. Um, and just know that there are there are townspeople out there that disagree with you um, about the safety, sustainability, resilience, and um, and aesthetics uh, because it is in the eye of the beholder a bit. And here's just a few points that that you know that you should be prepared to listen to, um, and um, and they are valid. Um, people might say. Oh, safety, but how could how could water and power and salt mix? Because I'm going to step in it and get electrocuted. Um, the sustainability and resilience, um, they might say, well, why does Collins come back online after storms after the re after the the, um, the residential community? Um, and um, and then the aesthetics thing. Um, uh, I happen to not mind the. I'm like. Kind of an old school analog guy. I don't mind um, teetering power lines. Um, I mind when they're going to come down in a hurricane, and that's why you know the, the town the town manager actually has a report on the discussions that he did with the cable companies and um, and FPNL. But it's it's down at item number I think triple E, and that was in the last agenda. So given the one for next Tuesday, maybe it's down at quadruple V. Um, we got to get a handle on the agenda and the discussion items because it's hurricane season. Um, you oh. know. So Charles, I mean, I'll, uh, let's Nelly. Let's see if we can get a direction here. Um, w are you willing to amend your motion to include costs? Oh, absolutely. Okay, good. Absolutely. Charles, are you willing to second the amendment of that motion? Um, yeah, but I, I'm not comfortable with the with the the conclusions about improving safety, promote sustainability. I I think it's like look, stacking the deck. And it's actually something that I would have criticized about the former commission. Okay, Charles, let me, let me, again, I'm going to try to wind this up. Let me, what if we say, do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines and other utilities in order to improve safety? Sorry, you I might should just stick off. with, um, do you favor it, period. Okay. Because you say proof safety. Okay. okay, hold on a second. That doesn't seem safe to me. Hold on a second, Charles. Nelly. Are you willing to say, uh, listen, I, at, we, do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines at, a, at an estimated cost of X? Are you willing to, 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 yes. to accept that? At an estimated cost of X and what else? That's all, that's all, okay? That pure and simple, real easy. They, 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 no, ask, I think it should say I think improving it safety, Absolutely. promote sustainability and resiliency. No, I, I don't think, it, I, I think you're hurting yourself by doing that. I think you should agree to say, you favor, do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines at an estimated cost of X? I think that's very to the point. I think you're gonna like the result. No, okay. no, because okay. I, I circulated right. an article uh, the other day, which okay. proves that these power lines are very are unsafe. Nelly, I'm trying to help you. I'm trying to help you here. Okay, well, I'm trying if to get. That's what you guys want. Then go ahead, do it. Okay, so you accept that change, Charles? Do you accept that? Yes. Okay, so the change is: Do you favor undergrounding the power lines in Surfside for a cost, an estimated cost of whatever it is? Okay, we'll put the cost. And other utilities. Well, yeah, and other utilities. Is that is that acceptable to you, Charles? Yes. Okay. Madam Clerk, call the question. It's non-binding, correct? No, no. It yes, it's non-binding. It's at the top, Ileana. Non-binding referendum concerning undergrounding of utilities. Okay. See, I, I don't, see, I don't, I don't agree that it should be necessarily non-binding. I think if the residents ha are asked the question, okay, and they know what the cost is, and they tell us to go forward, we should go forward. No, I'm sorry. Why would, why would you object? Why would? Okay. This, here's the question. Charles, and then Eliana, why would sure. you object? I can tell you. I object because we're asking the town to offer us a, a budget that's actually 50% reductions in cost because we don't know what COVID is going to bring us for revenues. Okay, but, but do you understand that you don't have to do it once the residents say it's okay? 
Do you understand that you um, have to do it? Yes, but I think that um, that it sends a mixed message to the voter. No, I don't think it does. I we think- We will be binding that. That's them. just my opinion. Okay, but here's the point. The point is, is that once you ask the residents if they want to do it and what the estimated cost is, then the, then the ball is in your court and you make the judgment, okay? So if you're saying no to that, then what you're essentially saying is that you just don't want to handle it at all. Okay, because what what you're getting from the residents is a green well, light to do it if you think it's in their best interest. You see? Well, what, what I think I'm saying is that um, I don't think it's good timing to begin the project. Well, you don't have to, though, Charles. You don't have to begin the project. You'll be. Um, I, I understand that point. So, so you know, anybody anybody saying that they just don't want to ask the question. He's basically saying they don't support the whole idea. Um, I disagree with that, but I, I see your point as valid to be considered. Okay, good. Eliana? I, um, I, I think that we don't, we all agree to non-binding, and I think that that's what we agree to even talk about right now. So changing it to bind, binding is a deal breaker for me. Putting it binding. What? Nobody's um, putting it binding. The mayor is. He was just trying to make it binding. He just tried well, to. Well, he just asked a question. It's discussion. But okay. Commissioner, so last I'm case okay. clearly has non-binding. I'm okay with the non-binding, um, as long as it's that abridged version. Of, do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside power lines and other util communications, other utilities, for an estimated cost of X as a non-binding? Okay. And then that's, when that's, we get all the final that's, numbers. Hold that's, on, fine. Finish, that's, please. that's fine. That's fine. Can I, I finish my thought? When yeah, we get all the final numbers but, later on, we're going to have to go back out to the voters with the actual plan when we need to borrow the $10 million to do it. Okay. But we're, we're agreeing. I think that's fine. So do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines and other utilities for an estimated cost of whatever we come up with? Non-binding. Is that correct? I, I'm sorry, but I still think that it should say for safety, and well, you can take out the sustainability and resiliency if you want, but I think it should at least say safety and, and, and reliability. You have to say something to the residents. You can't just tell them, oh, it's, here's the amount. So why are we doing this? Nelly, Nelly, the they're, of Nelly, Nelly, they're trying to kill it. And, and, but you need to agree to what. Well, then if they try to kill it, I'll make sure that the residents know who killed it. All right. Who killed what they want. All right, fine. That's all. It's okay, very fine. simple. Uh, very right, vice, simple. Vice Mayor, go ahead. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. No one's trying to kill this. Let's let's um be clear about what we talked about at the last meeting was that um not all uh, residents are watching. Uh, yeah. No, I know that. Uh, oh, you not know, I'm, you I'm you speaking know. right now. So okay. One of our our residents. I let, you is speak. I let everyone speak. Rude. It's my turn to speak. Thank you. So you know. Uh, it, we spoke about this at the last meeting, and it's clear that a lot of residents want this. We want them to decide. So I don't, I, I kind of agree with Commissioner Kessel in that we don't need to, you know, they know what they want. Okay. They know that if they want it underground and power, they know they want that. They, a lot of residents express that they wanted to know the cost. Some residents express that they want to know where the boxes end up. We're not going to know that of, until we actually get closer to the project. But I support the question as it has been amended as a non-binding. Okay. And and there are uh, public comment people that want to comment publicly. Yeah, you know, I'm allowing I'm that. Going to get to them in a second. Okay. But we have a motion on the table. Eliana. I just want to make sure this can be a, a good third item on the ballot, but this is not at the expense of the P3 and the protections for the future of the you know fiscal responsibility. Those are much more important. This okay, is good as a third again, one. Again, you're you. We have a motion on the table. Are we ready to call the question? Madam Clerk, call the question. Commissioner Castle? Uh, I'm confused because I thought that Commissioner Velasquez agreed to, to drop the issues, but then. She did. I'll, I'll restate the motion. Commissioner Velasquez, okay. you will say if that's agreed to or not. Okay, here we go. It's a non binding referendum. Do you favor the undergrounding of Surfside's power lines and other utilities? at an estimated cost of X, period. Okay. Will you, is that your, will you make that motion? Yes, that's fine. Okay, Charles, will you second that motion? Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Okay. Madam Clerk, call the roll. Does it, sorry, does it need to take Madam Clerk, call the roll. Commissioner Castle? Yes. 
Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Does it need to say communications? Okay, or no? yes or no, we're already voting. But does it need to say communications or not? Yes or no. I uh, how and other utilities included? I restated the motion. Um, I'm fine vote? with this as non-binding, yes. Okay. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. Mayor Briquette? Yes. Mayor Lemontion carries. Thank you very much. Good job, guys. Okay, open it up. Who's the first speaker? Mayor, you're going to have to give me a second because since I was sharing my screen, I couldn't see who wanted okay. to speak. All right. I did see Debbie Simadamilla earlier. So, Debbie. Um, okay, Debbie, go ahead. And I'll start looking in the chat. I had a question. I, yes. Hello. Hi, Debbie. Go ahead. Hi. Good evening, everyone. I hope you're doing well. I want to thank um, Commissioner Velasquez, Vice Mayor Paul, um, all of you guys, Commissioner Kessel and Commissioner Liana, for discussing this, and Mayor Burkett. This is something that before many of you were around here, we residents of Surfside have been trying to address. And I was around during 2012, and I've been around all these years, and I've been collecting a lot of this information all of these years, and I've walked these streets for various reasons, for petitions and, and votes and elections, and this is at the top of the list for many, many residents. Now, I want to address Commissioner Castle. You were asking about resiliency. Just so you know, I have been in touch with John Lair, which happens to be the person who is the engineer, the main engineer, and he goes to every town speaking on this matter, whether to harden, which just means getting concrete poles, not addressing the mess of wires we have. And I wanna tell you something. This is extremely important. I'm sad that the word safety is not there because as Commissioner Velasquez was stating, safety is a huge issue. When we have water in the streets, it's the downed power lines that cause death, okay? Also, I was told that 80% of reduction in average number of interruptions per year occur. There's reliability. I wish you would put that in your in your in it, because 80% reduction in average number of interruptions occur per year. 80% reduction in average outages duration per year. 89% of overhead feeders and 24% of the overhead laterals are impacted by the hurricanes, and it's reduced. And I need to tell you, all those blown transformers line cause fires every year during storms. That is not an opinion. That is a fact that undergrounding improves the safety factor. And regarding flooding, as Mr. John Lair told me, what they do is that they use two concrete pads, six inches if need be, to raise those transformers in areas of flooding. That is why Golden Beach, which is very close to the water, houses are right there, they have had a very successful undergrounding experience since over, well, since about 2008. So to answer the question, we are more resilient when our power is restored a lot quicker. And by the way, FPL John Lair, these are his words. When there is an outage during the hurricane, what they need to do is send armies of men to go climb poles, fix wires, transformers, when it's overhead. When it's underground, they send one guy for two hours to troubleshoot the switch boxes, which there would be maybe three boxes, Vista switch boxes. Those are stainless steel and water doesn't affect them. So it is an issue of resiliency because we are a more resilient town when we could get our, ta our power up. He told me that we could get up to 5,000 homes up in a couple of hours when they send one person out to see the switch boxes. So there is a reason why Commissioner Velasquez is saying that, because she took the time out to call Golden Beach, Key Biscayne, many other places, Sunny Isles, and she got information from the people that are already doing this or have already done it. And these are facts. This is not a, a, this is not a to be trendy De thing. Debbie, um, could, I, could I just uh, give a pers some perspective? Um, yeah, sure. What I tried to do is just give you an objective question. 
So that way, when you provide the information to the community, they don't feel like the question itself is loaded because you're going to provide all these facts and to, you know, for Commissioner Velasquez too. So if, you know, every, typically there's like a pro and a con column. I understand. I understand. This way you, can, can, you can educate all of us. And that's I what I intended to do is actually help the question. I understand, but but this is a safety issue, Charles. And I think that the question and the issue, it deems, it it should, it deserves the word safety. It, it does, because this is a safety issue. And very quickly to finish, regarding the cost, I hear condo people saying, oh, but uh, you know what? FDLT paid for the condo cost to be underground. And it sure is nice. You know what? We're one community. And when the condo people want something, it sure is nice when the residents, Okay, like regarding the, the the debris of sand that was on the beach facing them, that people like myself, a single family homeowner, paid to get that fixed. Okay, so it would be nice if we could work together as a community and look at this as a whole, because it benefits all of us. And it should be a matter that affects everybody one way or the other. Yeah, so the, I really, the, I really the, respect, I really respect what the what Commissioner Velasquez is doing. Please do not obstruct. Okay, Debbie. people, do not obstruct the right of the people to voice their opinion. Okay, Debbie, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Okay, Thanks. next speaker, Madam Clerk. Next speaker is George Kusulas. George, if you could please say your name and address for the record and your comments. Uh, George Kusulas, 9225 Collins Avenue. Uh, Mayor, first of all, thank you for laying out the, the five, um, the first five. Uh, questions. Uh, though it may not seem like it, I think it helped focus this conversation. It would probably go on till midnight without that. And, you know, everything was a discrete point. On the dollar per year thing, I, I think, you know, there's no amount of money that could fairly compensate you guys for the work you, you do. I, I was a commissioner for 10 years and I was a fat cat. I made 150 bucks a year. And this is, you know, adjusted for inflation. Maybe it's like 500 now. Um, so, uh, you know, what, what would be the number that would make you guys feel right? I don't think there is one. So I think, you know, the, the mayor is right. This is a, a position in a, in a small town, and it's really a, a, something you do because you want to do it. And uh, as, as much work as it seems now, I think that's right. Um, on the thing about leases, again, I think the way it was worded was, was correct. We can talk about the numbers. But the two-year thing, I think, is important because what you really want to protect yourself from there is from somebody actually improving the land. And to do that, they need a ground lease. So, you know, if you have a two-year lease for somebody to run a concession at the community center or whatever, and you attach options to it, it just to make that lease uh, seem a little bit more stable and, and uh, you know, attract more uh, lessees to, to do whatever you want to do. I think you're, you're protected. What you're really trying to protect is against somebody actually building on land, and they would need a ground lease for that. Um, on the 10% limit, um, I think, you know, that uh, was right uh, there. Having the uh, amortization period, that's really a, tr a threshold when you go above. Um, the charter changed very quickly. Uh, I, I think we disagree on what that language means. And I think for this thing, really for you to proceed, I would ask you to ask uh, the, the town attorney to weigh in on that issue and what it actually means and what that language meant in 2011 and what the thing means in 2014. I know you marked up the 2014 14 thing and it reminded me a, a lot of the work I do and, and I appreciate the effort you went through, but I, I think the attorney's weighing in on this is important. Finally, on super majorities, I think those are important, whether it's 66 or 60, but it needs to be more than a simple majority. You guys were elected on simple majorities. So I think you already have the authorization to proceed with something if you're asking for another super majority or another simple majority. The questions you were asking for are big questions that affect the town for decades. And I think there you're binding the town to something and that should be by super majority, if, if that's your intention, not just a simple majority. Simple majority is fine for you guys. You're, you're over in two years unless another simple majority reelects you. So thank you very much. Thanks, George. Next speaker, please. Next speaker, Jeff Rose. Jeff, if you want to speak, say your name and address for the record, please. Jeff Rose, 8851 Froud Avenue. Kind of just want to piggyback a little bit off George. Uh, I agreed with the uh, supermajority if we're going to have these big, long-lasting decisions. 
maybe the residents and voters, we need that super majority for some of these big projects. Also, in regards to the uh, term limits, you know, I, I felt that if, if uh, commissioners want to stay on and keep running and the voters want them, we should be allowed to, to continue to reelect them. And in regards to the power lines, um, it's going to be a very close vote. So I don't know if there's a, you know, I think a lot of people obviously want it. It's going to look nice, but the cost of it's going to be another thing. And I, I, of course, I am for it. But if if it doesn't pass, is there an option B where if we can't get the condo residents on board, where we look towards a single family district uh, of just doing the the, the undergrounding power lines uh, to see how they would feel? Because obviously it's going to benefit the homeowners the most more than the condo residents. So if we can't get the condo residents to join in and help us split the bill like, split the bill like we had before, maybe an option B would to have the just the single family if, if we couldn't get what we needed to. Thank you. Next speaker, Madam Clerk. Next speaker is Carolyn Baumel. Baumel? Yes. Hi, Carolyn. Just state Hi. your name and address for the records and your comments, please. Okay, Carolyn Baumel, 9481 Bay Drive. Um, I wanted to just say a few quick things. First of all, I'm very much in support of putting everything underground. And I think what's really important is if you've had the opportunity to ask anybody if they've had the experiences of living in areas where the wires are in fact underground. Um, after college, I moved back to Miami Beach. And if you remember in 92, there was a hurricane named Andrew. I was uh, renting on Miami Beach on Collins Avenue and everybody, pretty much everywhere in South Florida had lost electricity. I'm sure you remember it. Collins Avenue did not lose electricity. And it was just pretty recent that everything had been put underground. So my experience has taught me that you don't lose electricity. You're less likely to lose electricity with wires underground. I also grew up on Miami Beach and I've lived on Miami Beach and on the island where I raised my children, the wires were all placed underground and we weren't losing our electricity. If you had a bad wind, a tropical storm, or even a hurricane, you're very unlikely that you lose your power. So I really think that maybe you should ask about people and their experiences. My experiences, both being in an apartment and into house, a residential neighborhood, wires underground did not lose any electricity. Other than that, I just want to give the support to the community, and I think that you should think about it and be very favorable for it. That's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Next speaker, please. I have no more speakers, Mayor. No more speakers. Okay, good. Eliana? I just want to make sure we're giving clear direction to the attorney to take a look at the P3 item for the ballot to make sure we have that ready well, for is it Tuesday's meeting? With the exception of, um, uh, well, actually we just agreed to go past the first one. So all of those issues will come back to you in the next emergency meeting next week to make sure that we dispense with these items once and for all, yes or no, because we have a time constraint and we need to, Hopefully we won't have to take too long to get through them. But well, we, I think we already agreed tonight to do the P3 one. We just were changing some of the language. Well, well, yeah, but we, we agreed to, to put it in a different form. So that's, it's got to come back and we're going to vote next time to put, put items on the ballot or not. That's what's going to happen. Is she, is, um, are we going to have it before um, Tuesday, like Monday, where the attorney can send it to us and we can all look at it and yeah, talk to her about we're, it? We're going to send it out to you tomorrow. That'd be great. Okay. Okay. Because I think we all, we definitely all agreed tonight that we want that on the ballot. So Sandra well, needs to make sure that we can have three items. Listen, we, right. agreed, we agreed on a lot of things and we agreed to re rewrite a few of them. So we're going to do that. Okay. Well, we were very clear. We all agreed on the P3 one on the ballot. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So I well, want to make also, sure that Sandra we agreed. We also agreed to rewrite the uh, power line thing and, and bring that back so we could put that on the ballot. Yep. Right, but we and agreed we on that need, language we need, tonight. Yeah, we need Sandra to let us know if there can be more than two. Thank you. I'm right. sorry. I thought okay, that on the, on the, grounding of the power lines was set in stone already. Nelly, we need the money. Nelly, again. Okay. Mute everybody, Jose.
Hey, put your hands up, guys. That's ridiculous. I mean, I thought we were past that. Vice Mayor, go ahead. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mayor. I, I'm not really agreeing to another meeting. I don't see that it's necessary. I think it, we're talking about three questions. We've weighed in on it tonight. If we get those three questions and can look at it on uh, Tuesday, that would, I mean, I just don't think we should have to go to another meeting uh, or if not put it, add it on to whatever other meeting we have the rest of this month, but please not another meeting. Okay, well, unfortunately, okay, there may be because we are, our regular meetings are stacked full. And we've got to be sure that we get this in on time if we're going to do it. Eliana? Can we just add this to the agenda for Tuesday, these ballot questions and get them done on Tuesday? This is the most time sensitive, important thing that we can do for the residents. If you so we want can have the final version. Make a motion to put it first on the agenda for Tuesday, then we'll do that. Sure. I'd like to make a motion to put it first on the agenda for Tuesday. I second a that. <laughs> okay, good. So all of these items will be first on the agenda for Tuesday. Any comments? Um, yeah, I, I was going to make a huge motion that we need to put coronavirus issues first. So I, I'd say that this is second. Okay. Uh, coronavirus has been in discussion. We barely even get to it. Okay. Well then motion maker, do you accept that? Yes. Is the seconder accept that? Yes. Uh, also because this is an emergency meeting, can we discuss coronavirus tonight? I don't think it's on the agenda for tonight. So okay. Um, okay. Madam clerk, what do you have for us? Mary, just a clarification. So COVID-19 will be first and then the emergency, this um, ballot questions no will question. be second. Second, and then we'll go back to our regular agenda. Which will be the first one will be the quasi-judicial, just to Correct. make sure. Correct. Okay. What are the other ballot items? Well, there'll be all of them. There'll be all of them will come back for discussion. Well, not the first one. We agreed that we're done with the first no, one. No, we didn't. We just agreed we did. we'll be done with it tonight. Okay? No, we agreed that we were done with the you dollar a year again, one. You want me to turn you off? Okay. We voted on it. Okay, we voted to move forward. We moved. No, we voted to kill item number one. No, we didn't vote to kill. The, the word kill never came up. We voted. I did. To I, I made the motion. No, you didn't. I did. Okay, well, you didn't. I did. I'll make it now then. I make the motion. I'm going to make a motion now. Okay, that's good. That's better. Okay. I would like to make a motion that we are done with the discussion on ballot question number one, which is the one about the dollar a year and never getting money and all that. We're done with that. All right. I'll second the motion. All right. Good. Any discussion on that? Okay. Call the roll, please, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Salazar? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Commissioner Velasquez? I'm sorry, I don't even know what we're voting on. We're <laughs> voting on killing. Going on. Killing the ballot, no, ballot question number one and not to discuss it again. Which is the one about... Oh, okay. I'm fine with killing dollar. that. Yes, I'm fine with killing that. Yes. Vice Mayor yes, Paul? My yes. Mayor Burkett? Surprise, surprise, no. Okay. Mayor the motion carries. All right, very good. Anybody else have a comment before we adjourn the meeting? Okay. Which ones are left? I have a comment. Wait a minute. I have a comment. Okay. Go ahead, Nellie. Sure. I just want to make sure we're discussing the underground of the power lines right after the COVID next on Tuesday. Correct. 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 Making sure. Okay. And we're going to add that that language to the to the ballot to uh, the ballot question, correct? All of all of that, all of that. We're gonna discuss ballot right. questions. I'm fine with that. But okay. we're not gonna discuss the pay, the ballot, no, the that. ballot the question on pay and additional benefits for commissioners was killed. Uh, okay. Eliana? Um, I'd like to also make a motion to kill the term limits. I don't think now's the time to um, address that. That was, I think the second thing. Okay, good. Is there a second that motion? That. The town clerk needs to speak. I, I understand that, Charles. Okay. Is there a second to that motion? Um, to term limits. There is no second. Okay. I was, there's not enough clear on okay. what it means by term are, limits. Stop, stop interrupting. Put your hand up or don't participate, okay? This is not, go ahead, Madam Clerk. Mayor, um, the motion that was made by Commissioner Salazar, seconded by Vice Mayor Paul to discuss COVID-19 items and then ballot questions during the July 14 meeting has not been called the roll. Okay, call the roll on that, please. Commissioner Velasquez? Yes. Commissioner Salazar? Yes. Commissioner Castle? Yes. Vice Mayor Paul? Yes. 
Mayor Burkett? Yes. Mayor, the motion carries. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yes, so Eliana. I just, for the, if you want to do the term on it, you have to specify if it's mayor or commissioner. You can then go to commissioner if it's different titles. It's a very vague ballot question there. So if whatever, you can send us whatever, ahead of time. Whatever, we talked about it. You, you made a motion and it did not. Uh... I'll second her motion. Um, you know, I think okay. that um, okay. if, if you have too many questions on the ballot, then it gets lost. It gets diluted. Okay, that's fine. Um, we That's should. Fine. I thought we were only having three questions. Okay, so let's restate. Let's restate this motion. This motion is to kill the item on term limits. Correct. Yes, okay. for this election only. All right. Any other discussion? Okay. Mm -hmm. Call the roll, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Castle. Yes. Commissioner Velasquez. No. Commissioner Salazar. Yes. Vice Mayor Paul. Yes. Mayor Burkett. No. Mayor motion carries. Thank you. Uh, anything else, commissioners, before we uh, get a motion to adjourn? So now at the next meeting, put the your only hand one... up, Eliana. Yes. Okay, so at the, ne at the next meeting, you're going to come back with additional information ahead of time about your charter zoning thing, correct? Correct. We're going to then... get the language. We're going to get the language so it's more clear as we discussed in the meeting tonight. Okay, and we'll also get the clear language on the P3 so we can agree on that. Correct. And and Sandra will get us permission to have at least the three questions on the ballot, and what it costs to have a fourth, I guess. If if we go to the zoning thing, would be the fourth, I guess. Right, right, yes. Okay. Anything else, Commissioner? I have yes, a question. Nellie? I have a question. And then what Lily, are the what are the three questions that are so far on the ballot, Sandra? That we're going to put forward. Well, we're not putting Nelly. We're not putting any questions forward yet. What we're doing is we're refining. We're, we're, but we're how many refine. do we have? Okay, we're going to refine your question. I'll tell you which ones we're going to refine. Let me bring it up. Um, we're going to refine your question, which is the uh, undergrounding. We're going to be um, the term limits was killed. The 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 benefits was killed. We're going to bring back. The question about a prohibition on the sale or lease of property for more than two years. And we're going to bring back uh, the question about borrowing. Okay, so there you go. You have three. You don't need to spend any more money. No, okay. he Good wanted job. a fourth zoning one. Well, the, the zoning one is going to come back. But listen, if you guys want to kill that, that's fine. Okay. That, that'll be your choice. Yes, Eliana. Uh, wait, you, Eliana, uh, stop, 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 stop. Lily, you had a, a comment you wanted to make? Yes, I, I just want to confirm on the prohibition on the sale or the lease of land and the debt language. Both of those are binding charter text amendments, correct? Yes. Yeah, go right into the charter. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Is there a motion to adjourn? I make the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Yeah, I'll second. And productive meeting, we got a lot done. Good job, guys. Okay. And, yeah. and I just would like to say um, thank you uh, to our town manager, Guillermo. I think this is our last meeting with him. So oh. thank, I thank him very much for his service to our town. You know, I know his last day was is next week, but he's not, you're not going to be at the Tuesday meeting, Guillermo, eh? I was Eliana. hoping he was going to log on as, a, as an in, just because for fun. <laughs> I will. With a drink. I'm sure he's gonna love that. You can comment. This with is like drink. the most entertaining commission ever, right? Now you could tell us how you really feel. You know, <laughs> you don't have to worry about anything. No, thank you uh, to everybody, and thank you for the honor of serving the town for five and a half years. Thank you. Yes. You. yes. Thank, thank you for you serving the town so well. You did so. And well. uh, oh, I'm sad you're not gonna be. At this day. Thank you. Okay, uh, commissioners, good meeting tonight. Thank you for coming. Thank you for everybody that participated and we will see you Tuesday night, correct? Yeah. All right, have a good evening. Bye everybody. Bye.